championship coaches Nealon, Dooley, and Fulmer. And great moments captured by the legendary voices of Ward, Munson, and Lundgren. Well, we're set to go. SEC football begins for the Volunteers and Georgia. Manning rolling to the right side, throws at the end zone. Tennessee! Been around this game a long time, and I've never seen that. Great call. We hand off to Herschel. He's running over people. He ran right through two men. Dobbs heaves it. It's tipped up. It is caught. Jawan Jennings. My God almighty, did you see what he did? We just stepped on their face with a hobnail boot. Over 120 years of great volunteer bulldog moments. That was then. This is now. Touchdown, Tennessee. Hand off to Zeus. Touchdown, Georgia. What a run. What an effort. Stokes, he's going to take it to the house. Ty Chandler. Touchdown, Tennessee. I step to man. He's going to get into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Eric Wright to the checkerboards. Touchdown, Tennessee. For the quarter and touchdown on a diving effort, George Pickens. And with that, we bring you the Home Depot SEC on CBS, the 50th all-time meeting between the Volunteers of Tennessee and the Bulldogs of Georgia. Tennessee comes in number 14, and the Bulldogs number three in the country. Welcome to Dooley Field in Sanford Stadium between the hedges. Everybody, I'm Brad Nessler. My partner's Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl. The last time, Gary, both these teams were in the top 25. It was four years ago. You and Vern called that one. And now, since that time, it's been all Georgia, the beast of the East, and Tennessee's trying to get to that point. I, I think I remember that game. That was a pretty good <laughs> game. Uh, you know what? I've seen these two teams are yeah, but teams. Yeah, but for Tennessee, can you beat the big guys? And for Georgia, it's, yeah, but win us a national championship. That's how they're being measured, and that's why this game is the next step for both teams. We've got an unbelievably dramatic contrast at quarterbacks today. Jared Garantano gets his fourth crack at the Bulldogs for Tennessee. Brad, what I love about sports is there's no real status, you know. Wherever you come from, you have to keep it. Jared Garantano was the toast of New York. Five-star. Everybody want him. He made his announcement in Times Square, but boy, has he lived through some tough times. He hit rock bottom one day against Alabama, was benched, but I admire this guy. He hung in. He didn't transfer, and now he's playing his best football his career, and he's got the 14th ranked team in the country. Fun to watch a guy like this. Fun to watch a guy that nobody heard of until a couple of years ago or a couple of weeks ago, in some people's cases, a cult figure now in Stetson Bennett the fourth. Total opposite of the spectrum. Here's a guy that could not catch any coach's look. Look at me, coach. Look at me. Nope. I'm bringing in another five-star guy and another and another. And what did he do? Stuck it out, talked to his coach and said, give me some reps. I can do it. He has settled down this Georgia team. They're playing football much better with Stetson Bennett. Step up today, though, I think. He saved the day against Arkansas and played very well against Auburn in a win last week. So is the quarterback going to be the difference today or what? Well, I think it probably will be, but it's going to need help from the two offensive lines. Both of these guys need the big guys up front to help their football team. I watch warm-ups. Tennessee was almost scrimmaging up there. And when you watch Georgia, the name of the game, physical football up front. I love it when you talk about the big eaters. Tennessee takes the field here in Athens. The number 14 team in the country riding an eight-game winning streak. But can they beat the third-ranked Georgia Bulldogs? It's been a long time since they've beaten a top-five team. They get another opportunity here in Athens today. The dogs and the balls. The kickoff is coming up. We'll check in with Jamie, and then we'll play ball in Athens. Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by GMC, Papa John's, Verizon, and by Wheels Up. The balls and the dogs from
from Athens before we kick, we go to the third member of our team, Jamie Erdahl. Jamie. January 1st, 2020, still this calendar year, but a lifetime ago if you're Cade Mays. The offensive lineman started for Georgia in the Super Bowl in January, and later that month it was announced that he had enrolled in Tennessee with his intention to play for the Volunteers this fall. Now, he was only cleared for eligibility for last week's game against Missouri. The question is not why he went to Tennessee. He is a Knoxville native. It's more so why he left Georgia. When you look elsewhere, he only has support from his former teammates. Ben Cleveland saying you can't shake your head at the kid for wanting to do what's best for him and his family because ultimately that's what everyone on the team here wants. Mays remains unavailable to the media leading up until this game, Brad. But I'll tell you, all during warm-up, he didn't look a single second over at his former teammates. The first time he'll face them is after this ball kicks off. Well, he wanted to play with his little brother Cooper. His dad was a captain of 94 team as an offensive lineman. And now he's wearing dramatically different colors than he was back in January, as Jamie said, in the Sugar Bowl against Baylor. Sanford Stadium, 25% capacity, about 20,000 fans. Face coverings required. No tailgating outside. Cheerleaders and band will perform from the stands. 79 right now. It's a little bit muggy, and they had talked about rain starting a, about kickoff. Actually, the sun tried about half an hour ago here in Athens, so we'll see if it holds up for us and keeps Jamie dry. As I mentioned, first matchup for these two teams in a long time when they're both ranked. Georgia leads the series by one. 50th edition. About to begin as the kickoff comes from Paxton Brooks. And Georgia will start at the 25-yard line. So that brings us to a guy that could join the Justice League of America right now and be his <laughs> own superhero around here. Stetson Bennett, the fourth. Second career start. He came off the bench against Arkansas to win that game and then a win over Auburn a week ago. And the rest of the lineup that joins him. Kiaris Jackson has been his favorite target so far, emerging as another wide receiver other than George Pickens for the Bulldog offense. First down, Georgia from the 25. High snap. He pulled it down and got it to Zamir White. And Zamir White goes for about four. Quavaris Crouch in on the stop defensively for the Volunteers. And here's how their defensive lineup looks. Butler Solomon Bumpus up front, the linebacking core. Henry To'o To'o, who was on the pregame show, was hooking the guys, their leading tackler coming in. And there's the back end, the secondary for Tennessee. Second down, a long five for Georgia. And that snaps way over his head. Bennett's got a back pedal all the way. Dropped the ball inside the five. And it's going to be a touchdown, I think, or a safety. Let's see. It's a touchdown, Tennessee. The ball kept squirting around at the goal line. And it's recovered by the Volunteers. Trey Hill was replaced in the first game of the year at center because of bad snaps. Here's another one. This was really bad. Stetson tries to knock it back in play because he thinks it's going to be a safety. But from there, no one can fall on it, at least at first. I thought Samir White had the best chance to get it, and he did not. A disastrous start. Both teams saying, you know, the one thing we don't want, turnovers. Right. And what has happened? Turnover. Well, Stetson Bennett could have been 6'6 there, and he could have moved that no snap way. down. Really bad snap. So a disaster on the first snap for Georgia. A touchdown by Kavon Bennett on the fumble recovery. Brett Samaglia for the point after. Just an exclamation point on this. In the last three losses, Georgia has owned the turnover battle. Seven to one. That's just the second turnover in the last four years. Well, how's that for drama in the opening seconds of the game? Well, for Georgia fans, it's not drama. No. <laughs> it's nightmare. Tries to pick it up once. Then tries to bat it out. I thought for sure Zamir had it for a safety. He could have saved five points. But man, that was comedy of errors at the end there, wasn't it? Sure was. There's number three, Zamir White trying to cover it. Not only that, he was shaken up a little bit on the play, and we'll have to keep our eye on that. 
because he was swarmed under by the white jerseys and the ball continued to squirt out and Kevon Bennett with the touchdown. Especially because the backup running back James Cook was nicked last right. week so they could be both guys. So we got our second kickoff coming up. And it only took 43 seconds for Paxton Brooks to tee it up again. And one of the things that Tennessee wanted in this game is to be a game where they didn't get behind. They don't want to deal with the Georgia pass rush. And now from where they are, they can continue to run the ball when they get it. And so Georgia will try it again from the 25. AT&T 5G pylon cam at the goal line. Here's how it looks. Misses it. So it's a bad snap, a missed fumble, a batted fumble, and then a non-recovery all on one play. You can't have more go wrong, can you? Nope. <laughs> first down was good. First down was good. Jameer White got a five-yard carry on first down. And for the third straight game, Georgia started with two tight ends. They come back again with two tight ends in the game. And they're going to have Stetson Bennett under center of Trey Hill. Play action, roll out, and the throw is complete to one of those tight ends. And that's John Fitzpatrick. And one of the changes is Trey McKitty, uh, injured the first two games, is in there, number 87, as the other tight end right now for Georgia. He's a grad transfer from Florida State. And they've got a huge tight end, a freshman who they are really high on. In Washington. Too. It's going to bring up third down and about four at so, the 31. So in modern day football, it's going to be hard to just give up on the shotgun snap. You're just not going to, you know, I'd, right. I'd say more than half of their offense is from shotgun. You're just going to have to do it better, Trey. Remember, he was a starting center all of last year, so it's not like it's new for him. He's just got to be better at it. Stetson Bennett was very good on third down against Auburn, 70 percent, including a touchdown. He's got his. First third down here, third and four. Burton in motion will settle in on the right side. Quick slant, quick first down. And I think that's really Stetson's game right there. He likes the intermediate balls. He likes the receivers coming toward him to the middle of the field. Good timing, good throw, puts it in the exact spot you want. And all's right in the world again for Georgia. <laughs> Pick up a 17 to Kiaris Jackson, who's a leading receiver. We talked about it when we showed you the starting lineup. That's his 16th catch already here in week three. A career high game for him last week against the Tigers from the 48 first down. This one's down the seam. Ooh, big hit. Back in the secondary by Jalen McCullough. And the ball popped out of there incomplete. But what you love about this hit is the rules have taken effect. Watch McCullough. He knows there's targeting. He does a clean hit. He doesn't leave his feet. Five years ago, that had been a knockout tackle. Yeah. Look how much safer it is for the football players now with the new rules and the targeting. The effects of targeting have gone all across college football. So second down and 10 as you look behind Stetson Bennett and Zamir White and into the eyes of Jalen McCullough. It is Zamir White trying to weave his way for about three. And it'll bring up another third down. Zamir White on the carry. Jeremy Pruitt in his third season as the head coach of the Vols. He's an assistant coach on five national championship teams before he got his head coaching stripes and just got a new contract extension, too, as a matter of fact, in Knoxville. They're down in six. Bennett's in trouble. Down he goes from behind. Sacked. Coming from the outside just a little too long. That clock in his head has to go a little faster than this. Coming from his right side, gets around the outside, and as he leaves the pocket, not quick enough to get away from that pass rush. Roman Harrison with the sack, and brings up a punting situation for Georgia. Jake Camarda set to kick it. Eric Gray is back deep. Oh, what a punt. Good catch called for inside the 10 around the 8-yard line. 
So a good kick. Changes the field position a little bit, but Tennessee will have it for the first time offensively with the 7 nothing lead. 11-15 remaining in the first quarter. In the opening half minutes, a mistake by Georgia, a touchdown by Tennessee. Pretty sure if you ask Jared Garantano, uh, we'll spot you a seven-point lead before you take a snap. <laughs> he take it. Redshirt senior, this is his fourth time he's played against Georgia. Brings his team out inside their own 10-yard line. There's the group that joins him. Ty Chandler will start the game at tailback. And Eric Gray, those two guys will share the load as we go. Have some fun today if you're watching on TV. Watch number 73, Trey Smith, and number 68, Cade Mays, compete on the line of scrimmage. They are brutes. Couple of ballers. First down from the eight. And the crowd trying to give Tennessee a little bit of a problem. They're not doing a bad job for only 20,000. And no gain on this play, maybe a loss. Malik Herring in on the tackle for the Georgia defense that looks like this. Malik just made that stop. Dante Wyatt, Jordan Davis, the big guy at the nose. Monty Rice, the leading tackler, the middle linebacker. And the secondary for Georgia looks like that. Second down at 10. Aaron Tano, empty backfield. They had a quick throw out to Chandler, made one guy miss, but not the rest of the Georgia defense. It swarms all over him, and it's third down and long. I'll tell you, Aziz Ojolari, number 13's had a good start of this football game. He makes the opening play, then he comes back and drops right into the screen. Perfect call by Dan Lenning, the defensive coordinator, dropping his outside linebacker right into the bubble screen. Third down at 10. Not a good third down team, Tennessee. See how they work with this one. Especially against Georgia. They're the best in the country at this nickel package. Garantano at his own goal line. Throws complete. Not going to be a first down, though. Brought down at the 14-yard line. Yeah. Tyreek Stevenson, we saw play in that you know, dime package that Georgia uses on third down and long. Three down linemen, they let things happen, and they are good tacklers. So running time for Brooks. Standing back here is on the one-yard line. And that's Kiaris Jackson back deep for Georgia. Center official has to back away before we can get the kick. Short punt takes a bounce and saving some yardage here, or maybe not. Here's Jackson fielded on one hop and then lost some yards. George is going to have good field position nonetheless offensively with a little over nine to go in the first quarter when we come back. Now Georgia good starting field position at the 37 yard line as they trail by a touchdown. If you just joined us, that was in the opening minutes on a high snap and a fumble recovery by Tennessee in the end zone. Kenny McIntosh, good run off the left side. He's going to get about 13 out of it. So Kenny McIntosh seeing more time because of James Cook, as Gary said, a little dinged up. And a good game there. And maybe Samir White, we got it. But McIntosh around the corner, good block of the edge. That's what you got to get it. And when Georgia runs the ball, all things good after, after that. Got it all the way to midfield. We'll try it again. And successful again. Almost a five-yard gain as we get a Jeep update in New York. Here's Zook. All right, Ness, Red River rivalry. Texas trailed Oklahoma 31-17. Brian Jones fired Tom Herman on television, and Texas scored 14 straight. Keontae Ingram, who fumbled at the goal line last week, gets his hands on that one, and they're going to overtime. Back to you. Wow. Hang in there, BJ. We've had a lot of wow in our conference, too, today. We have, haven't we? Talk about that as we go. And the start of this game as well. Play action. Bennett. Throws high and wide. 
incomplete, George uh, and Pickens. Get, and we're going to get a late hit right at the end of this one. The two coaches before the game, they, I hope they know each other well, right? Yeah, they Personal do. foul. Dropping the passer. Number 13 on the defense. Held his 15 yards for the previous spot. Automatic first down. So as Bennett rolls out, DeAndre Johnson has a bead on him. One, two, yep. Wow. He's lucky he doesn't get targeting. He's an important player. One of the three guys that are expected to replace Daryl Taylor, their great rush outside linebacker defensive end from a year ago, and that could get reviewed. DeAndre Johnson had a big game against South Carolina. The opener had two and a half sacks in that game. He lowered his head. you got to lower your head a lot to get down by Bennett. That's right. Right? For sure. The crowd just saw the replay on, on the screen, and this is going to be close. It wasn't vicious, but it, they hit. Oh, man. Yep. He, he might be done. Whether he was trying to pull up or not, the fact remains it was yep. helmet to helmet. <clears throat> well, 90% of his body pulled up, but his head went down. And that's what caused it. David Smith is our referee over having a word with our replay official, Mickey Haddock. He is very, very nervous about take, being taken out of the game. Gene Steratore is with us. Yes, Brad. Uh, I can tell you, you know, naturally we can all see that there's an extended amount of steps that this player takes before he makes the decision to do that. Now, it doesn't appear to me that it's the crown of the helmet, but we do see a dip of that helmet, and they could almost put that on the crown because the contact is just above the, the face mask opening. So that's the area that they're focusing on right now. We all know that it's definitely unnecessary, though. DeAndre Johnson didn't play in the game against Georgia last year, and he might not see the rest of this game. Here's a call. You're hoping for a lenient teacher right now, aren't you? <laughs> After further review, there was targeting on number 13. He was disqualified for the remainder of the game. He may remain on the sideline. First down, Georgia. DeAndre Johnson only lasts a few minutes of this game and he is done for the day yeah that's an important cog one of three guys that will play that outside linebacker spot two clean steps dips his helmet gene yeah and the, and the quarterback's in a defenseless posture it's completely unnecessary and it's a tone setter i think you said it gary not that it's a, a not a lenient ruling it's a fair ruling and they set the tone for this game and i believe it's a good job by the replay official yeah, for, for to me he needed one of those old-time replay guys oh in my day because <laughs> otherwise he was going to be out and off zamir white trying to fight for I don't even know if he got a yard. Yeah. Remember, a new twist this year, uh, the player does not have to go to the locker room after he is ejected from the game. He can stay on the sideline, so that's why you saw DeAndre Johnson still over there on the ball. Sideline. So the matchup that is really important for Tennessee just lost a really good football player. That front four has to stand up to this Georgia offensive line that manhandled Auburn. You know, a lot of replacing players in the Georgia line, four of them knew this year but they still ran the ball well against Auburn. And the guy that has to take over for Johnson's a true freshman in Tyler Barrow. Barron, excuse me, down the seam. Complete McIntosh, still on his feet. First and goal, Georgia around the two. So Henry Toa Toa here does the cardinal sin. You cannot get beat inside. That's where you're vulnerable. Bank him outside. He lets him inside. The defense is gashed when that happens. You can live with getting beat outside if you're a coach. But when you get beat inside, there's nobody to help. Georgia with a first and goal. They bring in their jumbo package. And I mean jumbo. And I mean 625 extra pounds of defensive linemen ahead of the touchdown by Zamir White. the block fit the block again oh man if you're out there playing your 
Quimarius Crouch, number 27, and go, who's that guy? I thought there were fullbacks <laughs> on ISO. That guy was big. Zamir White with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. So Georgia has an answer after the early miscue that had them in a 7 nothing hole. They've evened it up with 6.38 remaining in the first quarter. Started with a targeting. That was it for the day for Johnson. And a big gainer down the seam to Kenny McIntosh. That got him close. And then to cap a 63-yard drive in five plays. The guy they call Zeus, Zamir White. And we're dead even at seven. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the completely free and always on sports news network for highlights, breaking news, and expert picks. Download the CBS Sports app on your phone or connected TV to watch today. So how big was that penalty for Tennessee? They lose one of their main players. It would have been third and five at that position. And remember, Tennessee came into this game so, you know, very few penalties. Only three all year for 20 yards. That penalty really cost them a touchdown. Jack Podlesny to kick off. Vegas Jones is back deep for Tennessee. Let it fly. And Tennessee will come out to the 25. And now we do Project Smarter presented by the Home Depot here. Yeah, if you're going to play modern day football, you got to have one of these guys on your team, okay? A coach who's been everywhere, knows everything. Brad and I go way back with him, right? Yeah, we do. He was coaching Drew Brees at Purdue when we first met him, and he's been everywhere else, and he can do it smart from a lot of different coaching booths. One familiar, he put a lot of years here at, at uh, Georgia. Yeah, he did. He is fairly highly thought of around the country, not just in the SEC. And, and, and you know, my MO on, on Coach Cheney is he can morph into whatever he wants calling plays. Right. His offense can do what he wants to do with the guys he wants to do. And I think today he knows he has to run the ball better because I'm just looking at the last three years for Tennessee playing against them. They have not been able to run the ball. They ran for 232 last week in a win. Here's a quick slant and out to the 34-yard line completion to Eric Gray out of the backfield. It's still a third down and one. If he gets up there short, he's going to run that quarterback sneak. He'll put his foot way back if he runs the quarterback sneak because he's under center. He's going to take the shotgun snap, and he's going to go deep on the sideline and just over the outstretched arms of Josh Palmer. Wow, I, I'm, I'm actually surprised by that. I thought they would bang the ball. With that offensive line out there, they needed a first down. Now, will they go for it on fourth down? With those big guys up front and the way they're, well, it looks like they're going to at least try to draw Georgia off sides, correct? They're doing that sugar huddle. They're going to get up there fast. And they've got their version of the jumbo set out there as well. Down to 10 seconds. They won't have a lot of time to draw them off sides if they want. They were perfect last week against Mizzou. Almost dropped the handoff. Boy, this is close. I don't think so. The umpire trying to separate everybody. You know, it all looked bad there to me. It took them too long to really know what they were going to do. It took them a while to get their extra players in the huddle. Then they bobbled the snap. And very fortunate. And then up front, not a yard. All they had to do is touch that stripe at the 35, though, and they have. Boy, I, I thought that way. They're still going to take a, I think Kirby's going to challenge this, isn't he? He might challenge the spot. I didn't think they got any movement here. Brad's right, pointing out because of the touchback, they only have to touch the line. Oh, man. There's nothing there that could change this call, though, right? I don't, I don't think so. No. Kirby trying to plead his case. So Wait. far, we've not seen anything. I think Kirby's first question is, are they going to take a look at it? The Georgia coach is challenging the spot on the field of a first down. The previous play is under further review. And I, and I think it's a good first half challenge for a timeout here. Bobbles the snap. Gets it there to Chandler. Boy, he is stuffed. That's a Georgia run defense. 
As you look right down the line, Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, what do you think? It is really close, Brad, but you know, as this second effort occurs and you look and see that football, to me, it appears that it just made that hard white line. And remember now, the ruling on the field is a first down. They have to have something very clear and obvious to go the other way. I just don't see this as anything more than a stands as to what they ruled on the field. I thought I got a clean look at the ball and it did touch the line. One more look here, if we can freeze it just a little farther right there I think after further review the ruling on the field stands of a first down first down Tennessee Good circle job here Good. yeah I thought that the third time it takes me three times <laughs> <laughs> well it's a first Georgia down. will be charged their first time out of the half I really like uh, Kirby's call there if you can get the ball on the 35 yard line it's worth the timeout yeah. try So first down Tennessee at its own 35. Georgia shifting on their defensive line. Garantano running for his life. He's going to tuck it and get what he can, and he only got about a yard before he's run out of bounds. Let me get back to the how hard it's been for Tennessee to run the ball the last three years in losses. In 2017, they ran for 62. In 18, they ran for 66. And last year, they ran for 70. They're gaining four more yards a year. Okay. It's going to be 2027 before they get to 100 yards. They keep up this pace. Pick up a yard for Garantano. Second down and nine. Holding number three on the defense. Ten yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Results in a first down. I did not see the flag. Tyson Campbell, the guilty party. Tyson Campbell was hoping nobody saw the thing. Yeah, right. So from almost not getting a first down at the 35, Tennessee's got a all the way out at the 46 now. And, and they also turned Ola Jarley completely clean again in the pass rush. Three wide outs. Really, really better moving. Well, that's one thing Tennessee should have been ready for. Let's see what happens, how they call this. Georgia always stems. They try to draw you off sides, and they also do it in case you're going check with me. You change the bubble. Georgia is known for this shift, and they caught him for a five-yard penalty. They do it to everyone. Ball starts on the offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty. First down. The previous snap, they shifted correct toward us that's how they so shift away what I mean in the check with me offense there's a lot of offenses now that get up at the line of scrimmage and they go we've got to play to the right and the left and they wait for the quarterback to designate it if he goes 66 even to the right 55 odd to the left so they want to move the bubble after the quarterback talks a little bit so first at 15 now and a straight handoff and a good run by Eric Gray Got to the edge, and Wanya Morris, 64, the left tackle, did a good job that time of getting his running back to the outside. Eric Gray coming off a 100-yard game last week in the win over Missouri. And it'll be a first down out at midfield for Garantano. Boy, did Tariq Stevens ever time out this snap count. He's the one that makes the play. Watch him come from the end zone, from the back of the field. He forces the Tennessee to miss their assignments, and then blows up the play. Third down and six. They need to get to the Georgia 44 for a first down. Garantano down the middle, complete flags fly. And it's going to be holding on Kanye Morris, Wanye Morris, excuse me, number 64 on Aziz Ojolari again. Having trouble with that left side. Ojolari is an elite pass rusher. Holding number 64 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. As Gary said, it's on the left tackle, Juan A. Morris, and this is kind of humorous in the pronunciation <laughs> guide for Tennessee. Me, I am. Gary said, you know, in the in the media <laughs> guide, in the pronunciation, it says, is it Juan Because he said, it looks like uh, it rhymes with Kanye. And I said, only in this day and age would we use Kanye as a reference to pronounce Juan So Kanye West, if you're watching, <laughs> you were in our discussion yesterday, man. <laughs> it's even worse than I knew who he was. <laughs> All right, you got me. 
Third down and 16 now. Garantano, late pressure coming, just has to get rid of it. He completes it. But he hits the deck right after he lets go. On third down, Dan Lanning, out of Kirby Smart's defense, dials up the blitzes. And he's coming inside here again. Number three, Tyson Campbell. Freeze it. You see Garantano can see it, has to bail and make the throw. Those secondary guys, they only put three down linemen in, but there's about six other players that could be rushing on the play, and it's giving you this Tennessee protection problems early in the game. Here is Jackson back for Paxton Brooks punt. High, deep kick. Jackson's will field it actually as he steps out of bounds at the five, which perfect. is where it would have gone out. Nice kick. Yes, perfect. 257 remaining first quarter. Georgia's got it back, but they're deep in their own territory, tied at seven. Stetson Bennett warming up. He's going to be at his own five yard line to start this drive for Georgia out of Blackshear, Georgia. And you talk about a Roulette wheel for Georgia in the quarterback position early before this season started. First of all, Jamie Newman came over, was supposed to be the man, transfer from Wake Forest. He opted out. And you start thinking, well, JT Daniels knees not quite ready to transfer from USC. So let's go with DeJuan Mathis. Let's try that. That didn't work out so let's good against put Arkansas. Our money on 13. 13, lucky 13. Stetson Bennett, he's the man, and uh, he's going to be near his own goal line to take the snap. We spent about a half an hour zooming with him yesterday. An interesting kid, very confident in his ability. The opening minute didn't go so well with a high snap over his head. Now he stands in his own goal line and he'll give it off. Is it in White? And only about a yard as we check in with Jamie. You know, Brad, hearing about Stetson's pedigree, it feels like destiny that he'd be playing this position for Georgia, but his future kind of took a left turn, a right turn, a U-turn sometimes, but he's here. He's the child of two Georgia alums, his dad, Big Stet, he's very close with. His parents had oftentimes come to 90 games during Stetson's childhood, could be seen listening to the radio call for the Georgia Bulldogs during his upbringing. Often known as the mailman, wearing a Postal Service hat during his training camps because he felt like that was the only way he could stand out as a young quarterback. It's amazing the thousands of miles they traveled trying to get an invite to elite 11 quarterback camps, and he kept wearing that cap. And he's throwing deep, and there's going to be pass interference at the 45-yard line as George Pickens got mugged back there by Alante Taylor. Yeah, it's a good 15-yard penalty by Taylor, though. I think Pickens was going to adjust to this ball and make the catch. It's underthrown by about 10 or 15 yards, and Taylor goes, no, I cannot give you a 40-yard gain on this one. So it's going to be a 15-yard penalty. They got a big gain with Kiaris Jackson on an underthrow ball last week. Uh, yes. The win overall. Pass interference on the defense, number two, 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. See, that, I think that's a good penalty right there for Tennessee. There's some bad penalties like we saw early in the game, but this is a good penalty because this is a 40-yard play. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. That's exactly right. You know, that last drive by Tennessee just wanted to make the point. Jeremy Pruitt made it to us that he wants to win field position. They got that ball in the 25. To get Georgia to get the ball in the five, that's what he's talking about. He feels his defense should be able to hold up if we can keep without giving them field position. That was a drive that was successful for Tennessee. So Georgia with a penalty can start now with a little more breathing room at the 21 yard line. Stetson Bennett under center on the handoff. And going to be a decent gain out across the 25. Kendall Milton there really high on him. Freshman out of Fresno, California. He might be the next big thing, number 22. We'll wait and see. They fake it to him. Bennett throws down the middle, complete. First down out near the 45-yard line. Well, finally, Trey McKinney is coming in here and said, this is why I transferred here from Florida State. Right side, play action, get behind the linebacker. Great timing that time from Bennett. Again, Todd Munkin says, I don't need my quarterback to throw all 50-yarders, but those timing routes is what he does well. And you said earlier, Stetson Bennett, when he's going down in between those hashes, has been very effective. On the ground as Milton works for maybe three yards. 
James Cook, who injured his shoulder in the Auburn game, and Jamie just let us know that he is not going to play today. So that puts a little more pressure on the freshman Milton, along with Kenny McIntosh and the starters, Amir White. Under a minute to go, first quarter. So we'll deal with a second down at seven. At their own 48. Tennessee's offside, free play. Stetson Bennett's going to go deep into double coverage. Incomplete. That was an Aaron Rodgers snap count right there, and he knew he had a free play, and he let it go. Smart play by Stetson Bennett here. Drops him off. He's got a free one now. I'm going to throw it as far as I can. And he almost got another penalty or a big play. Offside by on the Landers. defense, number 79. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. You know, I was talking last week about why with these smaller crowds, wouldn't more of the quarterbacks try to go with the snap yeah. count to draw people off. Everybody's going silent second count. Second Georgia second used second what's second happening second here. Second we got a quiet crowd, you know, 20, 25,000 people, and he's second. using a snap count and stole five yards. Already five penalties suffered by the Volunteers, something they've been good at. Three all year coming into this game. Second down, two at the 47. Blitz coming off the corner. Corner, the handoff for the first down could bring our quarter to a close. Zamir White with the carry. We're here and take one more look at Matt Landers. Get a little. Didn't, didn't land well. You know, did he land on his hand or his wrist? Because he kind of, yes, he comes off holding his wrist. So Georgia looks to the sideline and. There's the bad landing by Matt Landers. And we will have the first quarter come to a close. Defensive touchdown for Tennessee. An offensive score for Zamir White. 7-7, end of the first quarter. We'll return to Athens after this message. In a word from your local station. Set to start the second quarter. Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, with the Bulldogs and the Volunteers tied at seven. And Georgia with a first down at the ball, 44 yard line. Everybody bunched in tight. Zamir White, the single setback play action for Stetson Bennett. Plenty of time to throw and going deep for Pickens. And Intercepted. Now it looked like he. Yes, he. I don't know why Stetson threw it so far to the middle of the field. Trevon Flowers with the interception. The yeah. The, oh, they're going to rule it incomplete. He had Pickens way to the outside, and he led him way into the into the middle of the field. Should have been picked off. Did. Pickens to oh, there, it, there it does a one hopper. It. Didn't see it at the goal line. An opportunity for a turnover, and they didn't come up with it. Good call by the officials, not so good by me. But it gives Georgia the ball at the 44 with another chance, second down and 10. This time they'll keep it on the ground, and they're going to lose Penetration Yonich. that time. Kenny McIntosh mm -hmm. loss on the play. It'll bring up third down and long. We've been together a long time, and yet <laughs> it feels like we've grown apart, Gary. George oh. Hill, our statistician behind us. Welcome back to Athens, second quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, we're doing our job, but uh, Stoa Stetson Bennett doing his job. He got away with one there, but throwing the ball short over the middle, he has been very effective in this offense. Three wideouts to his right. Goes down the middle again, and this one's an overthrow incomplete. Kiaris Jackson says it's interference. The late flag comes in. Yeah, Jalen McCullough that time, number 22, just anticipated that throw and got there a little early. Throwing the ball over the middle, you get a lot of big plays, but there is danger Ooh. over the middle, That's too. That's right. Pass interference on the defense, number 22. Ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. So Georgia had one huge self-inflicted wound, okay, to start this game. But since then, it's been Tennessee making all the mistakes. Yep. Dropped interceptions, penalties, had a player thrown out. Georgia brings in two new wide receivers. 
Rosamies, Jack Saint, and Jermaine Burton are going to throw the pitch to the near side. Good run. Pick up of about nine for Kenny McIntosh. Nice call by Todd Munkin that time. A quick pitch to get around the end. You got your two tight ends right here. Get to them really fast. Get inside almost an on-block player to the outside that time. And make it to the corner and make a positive play. Kenny McIntosh getting his opportunity with James Cook out of the lineup today, and he's doing a good job of it right now. Stays in at tailback after he got nine on the last carry. And this has been the look. Two tight ends in the game, one running back, two wide receivers. And Fitzpatrick, one of those tight ends, was in motion and now blocks back the other way. McIntosh weaving his way through traffic. He really was. He was very patient, you know. Young football player, hasn't had a lot of carries. Waited his turn around here. We've seen this happen before. Have we ever? Patient, patient, and then go. Very nice run. Always seems like there's a second or third guy in the Georgia backfield waiting for his chance. And Kenny McIntosh taking advantage of it here in the first half. Zamir White back in. On a second down and four at the 15. White trying to bounce it outside. He ran right into. Henry To'o To'o, leading tackler, and maybe the next great linebacker at Tennessee. Yeah, you saw Henry get beat inside on that passing play. Yeah, give me a chance on a running play. Spilled outside from the defensive end position, and To'o To'o cleans it up. Here we go, third, and Tennessee needs to stop. Wow! Protection number one, Stetson has to know where he's vulnerable if Pruitt brings the blitz. Two passes on this drive so far, eight runs. This appears to be a passing situation on third down at seven. Bennett flushed out of the pocket, running for his life, and he's going to get a first down. Nice run down inside the 10-yard line. You know the old story when a bear is chasing you and there's two guys, okay, how fast do you have to be you just have faster to be than fast the other yeah, guy, okay? Right. You don't have to be 4-3 speed. You just have to be faster than the defensive lineman to get the first down. And he got it first to goal. Nifty run. Just inside the eight-yard line. Stetson Bennett on a quarterback draw, and again, now he cuts to the outside, and might have a touchdown. He does. Bennett on the quarterback keeper gives Georgia the lead. So we're talking to Stetson on a Zoom call. He said to me, if it stops now, it would be pretty cool. Hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> the way he's playing, not going to stop anytime soon, is it? Playing some good football, making great decisions, using snap count, understanding where people are, and even got a break with the dropped interception. Everything's going Stetson Bennett's way since the high snap. Nice drive. There we On the field was a touchdown. The touchdown. Remember, had a penalties in there with the pass interference. But a 95-yard drive is a 95-yard drive. That's right. Six minutes and 15 seconds. And Pylon Cam is going to give you a, a forearm from Stetson Bennett. And he says, I got this right there. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Looked like his hand got the pylon and the ball. Did it go outside? Yeah, I think he got it before his elbow came down. What do you think? I think he got it before his elbow came down out of, out of bounds. Gene, what do you see? I see the knee hitting just to, to me as the ball hits the pylon, almost in, in sync. So all that football has to do, as we all know, is just reach the front of that goal line prior to him being down or touch that pylon. And if we watch, you can see that that knee is hitting just as the football appears to hit the pylon. I don't see them overturning this. What? There's it stretching out to get to the pile on the left hand lands at the goal line. He wiped the pile on and our camera out. Right. <laughs> that part we know. Boy, the knee and the football are really close, aren't they? 
Again, Mickey Haddock is our replay official. David Smith on the headset. Jeremy Pruitt doesn't think it was a touchdown. Here's the call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Stetson Bennett with the touchdown. He did have a two point conversion run this year, but this is his first rushing touchdown in a Georgia uniform and AT&T 5G pylon cam. Here's another look from a different angle for you. And you can almost read the plays on his wristband. <laughs> but you couldn't see the knee of the football, so it didn't help. But Lesney in for the point after. And up and good. So Stetson Bennett gives Georgia the lead 14 to 7. As Gary said, a 95 yard drive is a 95 yard drive. And number 13 caps it from eight yards out, 14 7 Bulldogs. Well, there's the story of the day so far. I got to admit, he got one break. Should have been a, you know, inter interception in the end zone, but made the most of it. Tennessee now will work from its 25 yard line. So at first glance, it looks like Georgia, you know, is not running the ball that great from 34 yards. But remember, they had that 29 yard loss on a bad snap. Right. So they're actually running it pretty well. Tennessee, just 11 yards rushing. They've got to help their quarterback. Yeah. They don't want to get in those third down blitz packages against this defense. Too many great athletes for Georgia in that defensive secondary and linebacker group. There's a possession so far. Only the fumble recovery for the touchdown. Other than that, not much at all. Garantano has plenty of time, goes down the middle, completes it. That's Aaron Gray out of the backfield. Gray's got it out to the 32, pickup of about seven. Eric Gray last week had a touchdown run and a touchdown reception. Oh, that snap. Tennessee was not even set. They're trying to go hurry up on second down, and they make a big mistake. The receivers had not even lined up, and I don't even think Garantano knew he was getting the ball at that point. Uh, he he still, sure did. Uh, not at all. Made a nice catch. Ball start on the offense. All 11 players were not set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Second down. The penalties are piling up here in the first half. Yeah, and then they came in with that trademark of saying we've been playing Pruitt ball of penalty list football. You know, very few penalties coming into this game. Jump up in competition, though, always makes you play a little bit faster than you were before. Second down and eight. Garantano directing traffic. They'll keep it on the ground. And maybe a yard, if that. Devontae Wyatt made the stop. And that's third down and long. Remember this Georgia defense last year, the trademark of this Georgia defense. They didn't even give up a running touchdown by a running back all last year, and they're lining up again this year, doing the same thing, stopping the run. Third down and seven. Delayed blitz, throw down the middle is complete. It's a first down. And a good completion out to the 43-yard line, Aaron Gray again. Well, third down and give the quarterback time to throw the ball. Picked up the stunning all over. End man the line comes, but Nolan Smith pulls off just in time, just enough time. If you're going to let somebody come, you want the outside guy to be coming. It takes longer to get the quarterback. A nice third down conversion on that Garantano on first down. That one is incomplete, out of bounds. On the throat of Ellis Jones. Well, one of the things that you're going to have to do if you're going to catch the ball of a wide receiver against this Georgia defense is you're going to have to defeat bump and run. It's hand to hand combat out there and standing out of bounds by a foot, but that's what you want to do as a corner. Force him wide, and he succeeded. Second and 10. Trip. And going down is Eric Gray and a loss of one or two. So we get a Jeep update in New York with Adam. All right, Ness, hey, first touchdown in our game was unique. Same with Auburn and Arkansas.
Hogs punting from the end zone, blocked by Jordan Peters. Martin Lester recovers. Tigers on the board first. Gus Malzahn and Chad Morris exhale for a moment. Here it's third down at 11 with a nine and a half to go in the half. Georgia by a touchdown and only 54 yards for Tennessee so far. Here Towson, of course, short to Gray in the backfield. He's been his number one target and he got maybe a yard and then he got walloped by Nakobe Dean. Just another name. You're going to see probably 15 to 18 different players play in this group of defense for Georgia. And they all can run. They're all four and five star guys. Yep. And they're all eager to make a name for themselves out there. They have 36 guys that played at least 100 snaps on defense last year. Yep. Think about that. I thought about it when I was making my boards here. <laughs> I had to expand them. There were so many guys. Paxton Brooks to punt. He's had a couple of nice ones so far. This is an end over end job. Kiaris Jackson is going to say just everybody get out of the way, but he's going to field it on a hop again at the 15 yard line. He's a confident football player, isn't he? Well, he's been their leading receiver yep. through three weeks, and he says, I can handle a one hop punt. Georgia's defense did their job again. Brad, we were in Atlanta when Joe Burrow just gave, handed the Bulldogs a tough game, but he did it by running away from some big plays. Remember the plays Joe Burrow made when he was flushed out of the pocket? Well, Joe Burrow was looking at this and go, yeah, I remember this because they are doing the same thing today. If you're going to play against this Georgia defense coming from all the different angles, you better be able to ready to move in a quarterback. Joe got his first win after a tie and a loss, Joe Burrow. For the Bengals, who will be in action tomorrow at CBS. Defensive dominance of Georgia. That's pretty good when you're number one in all those categories. That's good. First down from the 16. Corner blitz. Stetson Bennett got rid of it to George Pickens. Did he hold on? Right in front of the Georgia bench, he did. As you could see that from the angle. He really threw it right at our press box. And he had one on one. He threw it right to the back shoulder. He knew that he was covered. Taylor's there. And Pickett stops and goes, Yeah, I can do this all day. You know, those receivers, they're tough to handle sometimes. But if you throw them six or eight balls, they're a lot better personality. George caught that one about three times before he hit the deck. It's his first official catch in the first down. At the 27. Not much there. Maybe a yard. Well, a year ago, Tennessee was in this football game leading 14 13 and lining up for a field goal. When Coach Pruitt talked to us yesterday, he said, You know what? We didn't handle the middle eight minutes of the game. The last four minutes of the first half and the fourth, first four minutes of the second half. He's getting to that time of the game here. He needs to save this game. So Georgia's got a two freshman running backs now. That was Dijon Edwards on the last carry. After Kendall Milton had a carry earlier. Bennett had to get rid of that one in a hurry as the blitz was coming off the edge. And it's incomplete. And that's back to back plays. They came off the slot on first down and blew the play up and then a second down they again bring pressure off the edge to try to get in the quarterback's face coming from the left side of the screen on block good job now that's an incomplete pass but it's saving 10 yards that was Alante Taylor and he almost had a helmet to helmet and it looks like that's invented is still trying to clear the tears out of his eyes right now for that hit coming in right there looks like it Third and nine, and a swing pass out to McIntosh. Kenny McIntosh short of the first down by about a foot. And we tell Otavo was the guy that made the stop. A nice spot here to try to draw off Tennessee off the field. Where you're punting from, if you have to punt five yards, won't make much difference. Will they go for it? Will they try to draw Tennessee off? Bennett in the gun on fourth down, less than a yard. Now he comes up under center. McIntosh behind him, and he's going to quarterback sneak it. It looks. Well, one official had his foot right on the line and then backed up. Remember, there's no yard line this time. You know, they have to, it, everything, it, it is on TV, but on the field, there isn't. Right. See the official trotting in from the far side. 
linesman. And then I thought he sort of changed his stride as he was coming toward the ball. I don't know if he gained any yards. No, Illegal motion, number seven, it's in the offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Replay, third down. So this is one of the greatest penalties ever if he didn't make the line. Did the play count is the question I have, or did they blow it dead? I think they might have blown this play dead. You're what right, a That's break what for Georgia, because I don't think they made it. The official may have said still third down, it's fourth down. So Jermaine Burke. Correction. That penalty is declined. It was fourth down. First down, Tennessee. Whoa, so the play counted. I thought it, they blew the play dead before it started. I think Kirby's going to want to get some clarification on this. I do too. <laughs> if they blew it dead, why would it not be fourth down? It again? would be. I don't think the officials field know that it was blown dead on the field. We're getting kind of a crosstalk of what happened, but that was a big play. I thought it was going to get bailed out by the penalty. Well, Tennessee takes too, over. Too late now. It's a play in a county. Garantano wanting to take advantage of it. Going to air it out near side. Caught. Touchdown, Tennessee. Well, how about that sequence? And Josh Palmer makes him pay. Thirty-six yard touchdown. DJ Daniel, number 14, on the bottom. Going to go deep. Man to man coverage all the way. Good coverage in phase, but the receiver always has an advantage. We shouldn't call them 50 50 balls. We should call them like 70 30 balls. Josh Palmer's been around the bend a few times. The senior makes a great adjustment inside the five and then scores. And we're about to be even at 14. It's extra point up and good. You I talk thought, about a swing. Well, <laughs> all around, you know, I, I thought they were just going to try to draw them off sides. I'm surprised they went for it. Then I didn't think they made it. Then I thought they got bailed out. They did not, and they paid dearly. About the strangest nine seconds of the football season so far, if you ask me. Gene Steratore is along with us. Gene, try to help to clear this up, will you? I believe it's Jermaine Burton on the bottom of the screen on this play really never gets set officially before the snap, which will be a live ball foul for illegal motion. He's moving before the snap. It's not a dead ball foul. So now we look at the result of the play. They rule short. I believe I, I believe he is short. It's a good ruling. So they have a live ball foul that can be declined. Doesn't prevent the snap. They take the result of the play, which is a turnover on downs. I thought the penalty was going to bail him out, but it did not. Big, huge play. Kirby makes a big, big call here to go for it on fourth and short. Was there a subtle push on the play? If it was, it was a veteran push because <laughs> nobody saw it, and that's what you got to do. And Josh Palmer, the leading returning receiver for Tennessee, if he did get a handout on Daniel. Just a left hand slight push. The, the official might have been blocked on the play no matter what. He didn't. You know, really obviously shove him. That's the way you got to do it if you're going to get away with something on those 50 50 balls. Josh didn't have any catches in last year's game against Georgia, and now he's got the biggest play for them offensively with the touchdown catch. Well, you know, you know, up here I was going, they're going to just try to draw him off sides. Tennessee have done nothing really on offense. Three drives, three punts. I was surprised at the gamble at that point in the game. Comes an end around. Burton, the freshman, he's got excellent speed down the sideline, still heading into Tennessee territory, all the way down to the 32-yard line. Well, he didn't move before the snap on this one, did he? Nope. Comes off the left side, beautifully designed play, completely outflanks, and a Georgia team that's struggling even last year in 2019 to find explosive plays, found one on that one. George Pickens got a nice block, the other wide receiver out on that side, and a 43-yard pickup down to the 32-yard line. Just under six minutes to go in the half. Benson Bennett lofts one. Matt 
McIntosh trying to make a one-handed catch. Couldn't quite pull it down as we get an Oklahoma-Texas update from Adam Zucker, New York. Zick? Yeah, Ness went to a fourth overtime at the Red River rivalry after the Sooners took the lead. Sam Ellinger on second and goal overthrows his man and is intercepted. And the Sooners win despite allowing 21 unanswered late in the game. Back to you. The Sooners, who hadn't lost two straight games in forever, will break that losing streak yes, in four overtime. Smart football player. This time he forces the receiver to the outside of the play instead of getting in the middle. John Schamberger has been banged up, didn't play last week in on the stop. And it brings up third down at seven. So let's see how that offensive line holds up the protection. Field goal range here. This is a situation where the defensive coordinators like to bring an extra guy. If you get a sack, you can get him out of field goal range. It's field goal range for sure for the guy that was the kicker the last four years for Georgia and Rodrigo Blankenship. Captain Lesney's long so far is 38. Whistle stop play here. I'm out. Tennessee. 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 Yes. They're first. Right at the five minute mark in a tie game in Athens. Wow, some crazy happenings in the SEC and all around college football. So those guys will talk about it in the Geico halftime report. One of the things Stetson Bennett has done well in this football game is get out of the pocket. He drew a roughing the passer, targeting early. Then he gets out and draws a pass interference. Scrambles down near the goal line and then sets it up for the quarterback draw outside the pocket again. His athleticism has made a difference in this game. There has. So third down for the Bulldogs, the Tennessee 29. On the last lineup, Tennessee was not going to rush. They were not going to blitz. Let's see if it's a change up here, why they called the timeout. Harris Jackson in motion. Pressure coming around the corner. Bennett again has to roll out and throw. Just get rid of the ball before he's decked by Morgan Joseph. Well, I'll tell you, it's a great call by that Derek Ainsley, the Tennessee defense. That time they spied right end man on the line of scrimmage. You watch him, only a three man rush. Remember, we just talked to you about they've been getting hurt Bennett out of the pocket. This time they spy and they get him going out of the pocket. They must have saw our highlight back. They did. There, right? Jack Pudlesny comes in to try a field goal, which would be his longest. I mentioned a 38 yarder earlier this year, trying to replace the legendary Rodrigo Blankenship, Georgia's all time leading scorer. Pudlesny, kick on the way. 47-yard field goal. Tennessee and Georgia in a tight one here with 4.49 to play first half. We're only about a month away from a tradition unlike any other. We'll see you at Augusta National in November for coverage of the Masters here on CBS. We have to get our game over fast. Uh, no, no, we're coming after them. We're after the mess. Now I got to get home fast after. That game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sunday Masters. This kick will be returned from the two-yard line by Bayless Jones, a great returner when he was at Southern California. He's got a good one here as he's run out in front of the Georgia bench. As we check in with Jamie. Brad Jarrett Garantano has had Sanford Stadium on his mind all summer. He grew up in New Jersey, but recently his parents decided to relocate to about 30 minutes outside of Athens. This is where he spent his quarantine COVID summer. I asked him what was different about it. He said, well, first, even if a restaurant was open, I would have avoided Athens as best I could. But he changed the way he takes notes and preparations for games. He's filling notebooks. He says his eyes feel more relaxed and the assignments are coming second nature to him. Well, he's had one beautiful play today, and that was right after the Georgia failed attempt at fourth down on the touchdown pass to Josh Palmer. He's back to throw again, avoids the pressure momentarily, and I will keep it. And he's got a couple of yards out of it before he's run out of bounds by Jordan Davis. Well, they're going to get a late hit here, too. 
Late flag on the play. I think Jeremy Pruitt would take getting out of this half 17-14, to tell you the truth. Remember that drive? They had that drive of two first downs, and they flipped the field. Tennessee gets the ball to start the second half. I think he'd go in. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number one on Georgia. 15-yard oh. penalty from the end of the run. First down. So unless there's multiple. First unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. It's George Pickens. Pickens. And we were talk, told by the coaching staff in two different interviews that George needs to grow up. There he is right there, and he's going to come over and start wolfing yep. with Garantano, and that's just senseless. And remember the penalty that he had last year where he didn't play the first half of the SEC championship. Because of the Georgia a, Tech penalty. was a huge penalty as well. well. We talked to Todd Munkin yesterday, and he said, you know, he's an elite talent, but sometimes he's so immature. And, oh, he squirts, he squirts water, water on him. Okay, well, yep. that, that, I didn't see that the first time. Nope. But somebody did. We got a lot of cameras out here. Just ridiculous. Here's a throw out in the flat wide receiver screen out to Jones, uh, Johnson rather, Brandon Johnson. So remember, going, coming into this drive, Tennessee's offense had 91 total yards, but 73 of it came on two passes. Right. So they've been bottled up all game except for two big plays. Oh, man, get, talk about getting hit in the face on a quarterback sneak. He's had several successful quarterback sneaks so far through the first two weeks. You know that Georgia had a key. Every time he drops that left foot way back, he's going to run that quarterback sneak. See it way back there? Yeah, he paid and the he price. Put, he, boy, did he ever. And as a running back, he's not a defenseless player. That is a big time hit by N'Kobe Dean. Got the first down anyway, but he's still checking his uh, jaw a little bit. He looks over to Cheney and go, do we have a fullback or anything? <laughs> there Tyler, the pocket holds for him, and he zips it down the middle. And wow, there's a huge hit, but a first down to Johnson. Lewis seen with the hit. Two high safeties. They're reading the quarterback. They're looking for crossing routes. And I give it to Brandon Johnson. He's going to get the respect of everyone from Georgia to his own teammates for catching that one. Garantano coming to the corner again. Same play, same result. Touchdown, Tennessee. Nope. Yep. Out of bounds. Could not get that right foot in. This ball was actually thrown better than the one other right. one. But just wide enough. It's the receiver's job to know where that sideline did his left foot come down. Let's look at it one more time. He's got the ball. I don't think so. I think that's the right call. The previous play is under further review. And it's on the field because the pass was incomplete. Question is, did he have the left foot when he controlled the ball? Got it. You might give him that touchdown, huh? I called it a touchdown because yeah. I thought it was in real life, but uh, real speed, rather. They looked at the left, the right foot, but maybe he had the left foot down. I think he's going to get a touchdown on this. I do, too. Gene Steratore, help me out here. Brad, I don't know if you need any help at all. You nailed that in real time, I think, <laughs> and that's fantastic. Uh, Listen, on all of these plays, guys, most of the time it is that back foot, which we all don't see really in real time as much, but replay does show that stick back out. In my opinion, the ball is firmly secure in Palmer's hand with the ball of that left foot still securely on the ground in the end zone. I think they overturned this one to a touchdown, and Brad didn't need replay to have so that it's, decision. Gene, just to be clear, it's not when he touches the ball. After it's further when review, he controls it. it is a touchdown by Tennessee. The receiver did maintain possession and got one foot down, ball in the end zone, touchdown. So it's not when it That's touches. That's exactly right, Gary. It's, it's when that he controls. It's possession. Right there, possession, he's controlled. Possession. And you say his That's toe exactly is down. Right. Yep, you could see the turf go up right there. That is a touchdown. What a play. What a drive. And with a little help from George Pickens, that made everything a lot easier. <laughs> sure didn't did. It? So Tennessee regains the lead. That will always be known as the water bottle drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. 
Jared Garantano, as Gary said, a prettier ball that time than the one before. Same receiver, though. Touchdown, Tennessee. Coming up, Adam, Rick, and BJ will have first half analysis and highlights on the Geico halftime report as you look between the hedges here in Athens, where the dogs are trailing again. First half appearances by Gene Steritzor <laughs> last week, too. Today, he's been a busy guy. Hammer ties that out. He's doing well. <laughs> Get off. Going to be returned. A little hesitation back there. McIntosh now breaks it down the sideline, cuts back in, and all the way after the 41 yard line. Good return by Kenny McIntosh. Yeah, with three minutes to go, and McIntosh giving him that great field position right there. Now every play is available for Todd Munkin in this offense. Runs through one tackle, then if you look downfield here, there's a hat on everyone. If not from behind, I don't know if anybody would have made this tackle. Let's go one more look at this touchdown. Once the safeties split here, only one safety in the middle, you know as a quarterback, you can let this thing go to the outside with no fear, and it is put perfectly in the red box. That gives Jeremy Pruitt's balls the lead for the time being. 21-17, Kenny McIntosh, a 42-yard kick return. Came in at actually averaging 43 or returns when he's right on the money. Here's Amir White. Hit in the backfield and drops, and it's Toe Toe, the linebacker with the hit. Well, he's got great instincts. I mean, you talk about a guy, freshman All-American, reads these plays, sees the keys, and then goes behind the blocking, gets through the middle of the line, and makes that play. Had one negative play so far since then. He's been all over the field. Gives a lot of the credit to Daniel Batuli, who was yeah. a really good linebacker for Tennessee the last couple of years, and he's helped number 11 along. And now he's the leader of the defense. Second down at 12. The delayed handoff. Zamir White cuts it outside, runs over a guy, and gets it to the 49. So Georgia has had a lot of good runs. They're just not having those breakaway runs. You know, you go back a couple of years. In 2017, when they had Chubb and Michelle, they had seven plus 50 running plays. And in 18, they had five. They've only had one running play in the last two years, 19 or this year, of over 50 yards, and that was in mop-up duty against Louisiana Tech last year. So not getting those big runs from the running back. Third down at three. Number three still in the backfield with Stetson Bennett. And he'll get the call, and he'll get the first down, and almost a face mask on top of it at the end of the play. So this offensive line that manhandled Auburn so well. Good job inside, turn your men. Justin Schaefer, number 55, does a nut job. Just hit him and then turn your butt in the hole. A minute 25 to go in the half. Georgia with two timeouts left. Deep middle, got it, throw to the tight end. And it's all the way down to the 16-yard line to Trey McKinney. They call it throwing your man open. But you love the matchup. You got Jeremy Banks, number 33, matched up against your tight end, and you lead him to the open area. Cannot do it better than that. That's a. Bennett coming back the other way, and Bennett forwards and then right out of the backfield and complete. That was a 28 yard pass play. So Stetson Bennett made a name for himself being the scout team quarterback. Prior to the Oklahoma game, he was Baker Mayfield. Right. And Baker Mayfield just went on that throw and said, yeah, that's a throw I make all the time right there. That throw over the middle, timing route, throwing your receiver open. That's a skill that not a lot of people have. Doesn't matter how tall you are, you can make that throw, you can play anywhere. Second down at the 17 in the final minute of the half. And the throwback complete. To Burton. Burton broke a tackle, still heading down toward the goal line. And that's the second time he's used his sideline nicely. He stepped out at the five. He actually broke two tackles on the play. He broke the tackle by Banks and Taylor. Watch number two. Taylor comes up, he misses, and Banks misses. Two guys missed the tackle for the positive play. You know, they kept talking about Jermaine Burton, the freshman. We'd see more and more of them. We've seen quite a bit of them here in the first half. Georgia's had two trips to the red zone. They've scored both 
times. Stetson Bennett. You know, with two timeouts, time is not a factor for Georgia here. Kenny McIntosh behind Bennett. Uh, first and goal at the five. He'll get the carry. He got hit in the backfield, but now cuts it to the far side with a stiff arm. He's still going to be bulldog down and around the four yard line. Well, Darrell Middleton, number 97 for Tennessee, I thought was going to get a tackle for a loss, but another play that you do not get a wrap up tackle in the backfield. Just run through it. You got to give that one to the running back. Yep. And Bryce Thompson finally. And was it a face mask at the end there? Fans think so. Second down to goal. Georgia closing in at 100 yards on the ground. Don't need four more yards for a touchdown. And don't quite get it here, but it is very, very close. Just shy of the goal line. Georgia's going to take a timeout here. Get a good push. Remember, those linemen join in down here. It's really tough to stop the guy when that push from the extra lineman and just short. Yep. Not even the length of the football. Zamir White pushes it out across the goal line at the end, but he had already been down there at about the one foot line. Uh, look, on the last play, it looked like both guys had a face mask on the play. The straight arm face mask, and then yep, just no got face in. mask. Yep. yep. Just got it in the jersey and the pads. Let's see if Georgia brings in that jumbo set again offensively when they bring in Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter, who are both defensive linemen. And as I said earlier, that's 625 extra pounds to push. Well, remember, you have a timeout left, so you can run anything you want here. Okay? You can run or throw. You got a timeout to then decide on fourth down what you want to do. I love this guy, Jordan Davis, a nose tackle at 300 and 30, uh, 320 pounds. And then Jalen Carter, just a little guy. He's 305. <laughs> so there they are. Now you know they've got a play action pass off of this. Do they dial it up again? They have a timeout. Anything in the playbook can be called. They've got two tight ends in there as well, plus all that extra beef. And it's Zamir White. He didn't get there. Mm -hmm. Timeout, and now you've got to decide. It appears he almost made a lost a half a yard. Kirby says, I want a timeout with four seconds left. I think they might have let an extra second go off. Another look at the play. No movement at all from that Georgia offensive line. Did not back up Tennessee one inch. In fact, the push came from Tennessee. Yeah, they did. In 95, Kavon Bennett, who had the fumble recovery for a touchdown, is one of the many white jerseys down there at the bottom of the pile. All right, you got one second left. You go for a touchdown? Or I, would, field goal? I would go for the touchdown. I would just go for that. Come on, you, it would be a tough message to your football team to say, we're going to kick a touchdown here from the three-inch line. Kick a field goal, excuse me, from the, from the three-inch line. Remember, they got the nice kickoff return from Kenny McIntosh. They started at the 42-yard line, so they've worked it inside the one of Tennessee with one second left. And here comes the same lineup. Tennessee will get the second half kickoff. I saw him talking, Kirby was, to Ben Cleveland, number 74. I wonder if they will run it to the right side off of Ben Cleveland. And now, whistle stop play. Tennessee going to take a timeout. Tennessee, their second. Jeremy Pruitt wants all his balls in a row. As he saw the same grouping at least come out for Georgia offensively with one tick left. Need to go on a vacation? Why not take a trip around the world? Don't let your four walls keep you from the adventures of a lifetime. New season of The Amazing Race begins this Wednesday at 9, 8 Central on CBS. It has been an amazing SEC race through two and a half games so far. Yeah. A couple of upsets that, uh, well, I guess they're upsets. I don't know anymore, but Zook and the guys will talk about a couple SEC games that probably didn't yeah, the, go how you expected. Yeah, the bottom of the conference isn't getting bullied as much as they used no. to, are they? Uh -huh. It's a huge win for Jimbo Fisher on that program, no doubt. We talked about it last week. We were doing the game. He had two big games. He had to win one of them. He got Florida today. Fourth and goal 
inside the one yard line with one second to go. Zamir White the tail behind the jumbo set and Zeus did he get there? He did not. Goal line stand by the Volunteers. My goodness. And his little throw to the goal line. That's the second fourth down stop in this game by Tennessee. A third down shot stop and then a fourth down stop. Remember they stopped it before for a touchdown as well. So 14 point swing on two fourth down stop by the Tennessee defense. You got your number one tailback with a head of steam and a whole bunch of beef in front of him. And Tennessee did its job. Jamie's with Kirby Smart. Coach, I know you wanted to see that play again. Will you walk us through that decision to go for there on the goal line? Yeah, when you're inside the one, you got to have a mentality that you're going to score. You know, we've had two fourth downs that we couldn't get less than a yard. So give them credit, but we didn't do what we're supposed to do. You have two explosive plays and spotted them a touchdown on the snap. You held them on the run game, but what's happening in your pass coverage? Well, they're taking some shots. They're going quick, taking some shots outside, and they've hit two for two of those shots. We got to get those ball down, and we got to try to help get some rush. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, a whole half to go, and he said exactly what. You said, Gary. Yep. Good job by Tennessee on the road. They lead in Athens 21 17 at the end of the half as we had Adam Zucker and our guys in our New York studio, guys. All right, Ness, how about these fourth downs today? Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, a look at a thrilling day of action thus far a pair of SEC upsets and a Red River rivalry that needed four overtimes. After this word from your local station. Halftime in Athens, Tennessee tried to upset the Georgia Bulldogs on their home field, and they're halfway there, 21-17. And now time for a taste of tradition, presented by Sonic. We hand it off to Herschel. There's a hole. Five, 10, 12. He's running over people. Oh, you Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker went 16 yards. He drove right over Orange Church, just driving and running with those big ties. My God, a freshman. And there's a touchdown! Touchdown, my God, a touchdown! <laughs> we, threw it to, we threw it to Haynes! We just stepped on their face with a hobnailed boot and broke their nose. We just crushed their face. Dobbs heaves it. They're bunched up in the end zone. It's tipped up. It's caught! It is caught! Jawan Jennings! Jawan Jennings! Two of my dear friends, Vern Lundquist on one call and the late great Larry Munson on several others. Georgia trailing Tennessee 21-17 at the half between the hedges. Back in Athens. Just about set to start the third quarter with the Tennessee Volunteers, the number 14 team in the country, trying to pull an upset over third-ranked Georgia, and they've got the lead, and they will have the football momentarily as well, up 21-17. Jared Garantano, very efficient first half, 11 of 13, a couple of touchdown passes to Josh Palmer. Handling the football at the 25 yard line. Uh, the touchback. And we bring you back to the booth. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Jamie down on the sideline. Two fourth down and less than a yard calls it, and they could haunt Georgia maybe the whole season, Gary. Plus the one on the short yardage before. So the small plays have been won by Tennessee, and the big plays have been won by Tennessee. They've hit the two big touchdown passes. So it's an hour and a half here. First half, they're in the game. Second half, can they hold on and beat this good Georgia team? I mean, it is a really, it's upset Saturday in the SEC. Can Tennessee do it here? On the ground, which they have had a hard time getting anything going, a pickup of a yard maybe, but retired Chandler as we check in with Jamie. Guys, I was told by a Tennessee staff member the players were elated as they headed into the locker room. So when I asked Jeremy Pruitt, he must be happy. He said, no. Seven penalty is pretty unhappy with some of those mistakes the Tennessee guys made. I said, Coach, how do you get the run game going? 19 yards. Said, you have to commit to it. If they're going to pile guys in there, we have to do the same. They just added another penalty to. 72 the on the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. When Jamie says seven, it becomes eight. Ball start on right, the right tackle. Well, besides Jared Cantano, 
playing 11 for 13 really well. No mistakes is the back end of that yeah. team. You know, no, none of those disaster plays where he goes to the bench and go, oh God, am I coming out for the next series or not? I'm not sure. We've seen that in the past from him, but he has done a nice job today. 74 yards and penalties. Aaron Tano down the middle and knocked down. Nice defensive play by Eric Stokes. First half trends. Stetson Bennett, not bad, had a rushing touchdown. Eric Garantano, there's his numbers. Both to Palmer for touchdowns and 0 for 2 on those two short yardage plays for Georgia on fourth down. Three big short yardage plays, two on fourth down has been the difference. Garantano on third down, and he's going down, and the ball is out, and Georgia's got it at the 15 yard line. Ojolari, I think, is the guy that's covered it. Well, this is just careless not taking care of the football. Jared knew he was in congestion on this play. There's Olazari. Let's see how he gets around the corner this time. Gets taken down, gets back up, and then strips the ball. And the only team in the SEC that had not turned the ball over so far this year, Tennessee, just turned it over. And that's one of those where you're dependent on your quarterback. Can you just get us out of this play and not get a turnover? We can take a sack there, but it's the worst of the worst. So in the opening 35 or 40 seconds of the first quarter, yes, Georgia had something go terribly wrong. And now in the opening minute of the third quarter, first turnover of the year for Tennessee. Let's see if Georgia can take advantage. Zamir White. You know, this is a team that has not lost a lot of yards running all year. Only six yards rushing all year have they lost. This defensive line, which I thought had to step up in this game for Tennessee, has done a nice job. Now, Georgia's rushed for close to 100 yards. Remember, they had that one reverse that yeah. gained a big chunk out of that play. Come again, Zamir White had not lost any yardage on any of his carries, nor had Ty Chandler on the other side for Tennessee. You don't see that very often. This time they drop him, don't let him get away. And Tavares Crouch made the hit. Tennessee substitutes four players on it, getting in their nickel or dime package. Mm -hmm. We got whistles on the field. Elijah Simmons, number 51, coming off limping. Tennessee gave him, if you're hurt, you? we'll come out and get you. Don't limp to the bench. We could use the timeout. Simmons, a redshirt freshman out of Memphis. He was trying to get off the field. He's right. Personal foul. Personal foul. Shot block on the offense. On the offense. Was. Number 74 and 55. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. That's what happened. Trey Hill 55 and Ben Cleveland 74. Watch him pin him. Trey Hill goes slow and two play players engage at the same time. Ooh, that's a bad mm. That's a bad look right there. That's something we don't want to see in our game. Would have been fine for Trey Hill to hit, but when Ben Cleveland joined in, then it became dangerous. Cleveland, the guy they call Big Country out of Tacoma, Georgia, 335 pounder. So Georgia backs up to the 30. We'll hope that Elijah Simmons is going to be okay. McIntosh joins Bennett in the Georgia backfield. There has been no help so far against Pickens man to man out here. Bryce Thompson's got him all over the field. Bennett goes, almost got an interceptor trying to get it out there to the big tight end, and there's a flag down. Zero on zero. That's Darnell Washington, the freshman tight end. Washington goes out there, gets the matchup. Back shoulder turned into front shoulder, yeah. and that became dangerous. Actually thought that was Pickens out there, that zero, that was the tight end, I didn't recognize that.
Barry Bruce says back him up. So it's going to go against the tight end. Pass interference on the offense, number zero. Penalty is declined. Third down. I think that's the right call right here. You don't want to give him second down again. You don't get a penalty for a first down or something like that. Now it's third and long. Well, I, don't, I don't know about that. Do I. I thought that was uh, kind of a chintzy call. Those two guys fighting, big tight end, little corner, nothing happened. Let him play ball on that one. I so love that call. Instead, it's third and 25. Georgia has to get to the five yard line for a first down. Really no harm. They declined it, so nothing really happened. Blocker is in front of McIntosh, who gets back to the 16-yard line. Whoa, and there's a shove, almost a punch. By Trayvon Flowers at the end of that play. Getting a little chippy out there right now. Draw play, get into field goal position. That's what Kirby was trying to accomplish. After the turnover, make sure you come out of here with points. Watch the end of this play. Watch number one come in. And... Oh, that was close to a punch. McIntosh is in there fighting. Actually, the punch was not the guy I called. It was Thompson. It was. It was Thompson, wasn't it? That was a four-arm ship. Meanwhile, 34-yard field goal is up and good. That's what Georgia gets out of the Jared Garantano fumble. Looked like they would have a chance for seven. They have to settle for three. After further review, it is a touchdown by Tennessee. And Zeus, did he get there? He did not. Goal line stand by the Volunteers. 21-20 is where we stand right now at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. As Georgia couldn't get anything going after the turnover and had to settle for the field goal, so they cut the lead to one. It's a high, shorter kick. Bayless Jones. From the five, not only to the 21, maybe the 22 yard line. Tennessee comes back out offensively. Kirby Smart in his fifth year as the head coach at Georgia, one of several head coaches that are at their alma mater. Kirby was an all SEC defensive back back in the day. With that, test your knowledge with the Athlete trivia question. And the nine head coaches at their alma maters is the only person to win a national championship either as a player or a coach. Let your work on that one for a minute. Pick up of a couple. Again, the ground game of Tennessee's not much there for Eric Gray and Ty Chandler today. It's been the defense, the big plays. Tennessee even put their big guys in. They had seven offensive linemen on the field for that play and still didn't gain but two yards. Second and eight. They'll try it again. This one's a little better result for Gray as he got out across the 30 to the 32. It's going to bring up third down. You know, we mentioned that Jared Garantano has not had the mistakes in this game. He doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, period. He's only had 13 career interceptions, best in Tennessee history, over 700 passes. This one he throws up his back foot, and there's the interception right on Gary's cue. And that's one decision making. Throws it off his back foot, as Brad told you. When you make poor decisions, bad things happen. Eric Stokes, second interception of the year. Nothing's there. Just get out of it. Just get it. Back-to-back -back turnovers. And can the defense save him again? Pressure in his face. Watch him go backwards and throw it. Tigreek Stevenson put a helmet right in his chest. And the end result, an interception at the 36. That's when you look at your quarterback and go, you just can't do that to us. Mm -hmm. We talked about the ending four minutes of the first half, the starting four minutes. Their defense just saved us again. They've had four big plays, plus really a touchdown on a bad snap. They didn't do anything. But the defense is, and you put Georgia back into field position again. They said coming in, they had not turned the ball over. They've turned it over on back-to-back -back possessions now. Jermaine Burton in motion. Handoff straight 
up the middle. Kendall Milton out of the carry. Both turnovers were on third down for Tennessee. Just punt the ball, gain 40 yards on a punt, and let your defense go out there again. Again, Milton seeing extensive playing time, but James Cook not playing today. And he stays in there. Franklin out of Fresno, California. Second and seven. Bennett, the quick look, the throw is tipped. Exactly. Durant Middleton, I think, is the guy that got a hand on Durell Middleton. Not the tall quarterback, you know, the Drew Breeses of the league. You're throwing the ball short. You ask your offensive lineman to help me out just a bit. And Middleton gets it and gives the help. Pass was intended for Trey McKinney, the tight end. So Georgia finds itself in third down again. Third and seven. to let this one go when the pressure got to him incomplete intended for Kieris Jackson very aggressive man to man defense that time they got a safety to help deep but up front those linebackers are playing two and two right here to a toe right there has got man to man coverage man on the crossing route they're going to make it tough inside and Bumpus does a good job of getting in the face of Stetson back well they gave their new kicker but Lesney a crack from 47 earlier, they're going to ask him for 51 this time. Jake Kamara to the hold. But Leslie from long range. Kick on the way. It is good. Plenty good. Well, when you're replacing a legend, this is a way to make a name for yourself. Jack Leslie from 51 yards out has given Georgia the lead back. 23-21. Georgia's defense with the interception, but Lesney with the long field goal. Georgia back in the lead. The Home Depot, SEC on CBS, is sponsored by Boya Financial. AT&T 5G. Dr. Pepper. And by Zaxby's. Well, Tennessee's defense did its job the last couple of times the Bulldogs had the ball, but still Georgia has regained the lead. Coming up later, play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. There are several candidates already in that department. Sometimes you talk about a guy, Jared Garantano had a great first half, 11 for 13. He comes out 0 for 2 with a fumble and an interception. Not good. Jack Lesney sees it up for the dogs. But Lesney who hit the 51 yard field goal, set the kick away. And does a good job on the kickoff as well. Tennessee's defense, Gary's been pretty good today. It has. Started in the first half when they had this fourth down quarterback sneak stop on the play. That led to a touchdown right there. 14 point play, then two stops at the end of the half to get out to save seven points. Then following the Garantano fumble, they get a stop to force a field goal. And then after the interception, positive territory again. They get another stop to keep it in. Great defense by this volunteer defense. Now after a couple of mistakes by number two, let's see how he handles it. Garantano on first down. Deep, far sideline. Knocked out of there by Stokes, who had the interception on the previous series. In phase, doing a good job on Tillman, turns into the body, plays the ball perfectly. That's how they teach him nowadays. Turn into the body and then look back. Play action, a little bit of a bootleg, and now Garantano's just got to get rid of this thing. Lobs it to the Georgia sideline. So the Georgia defense has been ready to play the second half of the football. Yeah, they have. Remember the last two third downs were turnovers. Here's the pressure again. This time it's Malik Herring. And Nolan Smith. And third and ten. They haven't converted a third and eight or more yet. 
Tennessee trying to pick one up here. Eric Gray in motion out to the top as a wide receiver. Garantano down the middle. Pass complete. Missed tackle. And Jones, uh, uh, Brandon Johnson, I beg your pardon, is close to a first down. Did he get it? Well, I'll tell you, offensive coordinator Jim Cheney helped his team out right there. They had a unique formation. Four eligible receivers to one side, and then the running back shifts out to the other side, and that caught the Georgia defense a little out of sync. Flag after the first down completion to Johnson. Thought it was a false start, but let's see. Illegal snap. Number 55 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Brandon Kennedy, the center, who came over transferring from Alabama. He's going to say that's the third time Oop. that he feels that the Georgia defense made a sound or something and it affected his center. He said, he said it's the third time. But Tennessee should have been ready for it. It's all over the tape when you watch it. Garantano almost picked off again. Almost another interception. Yeah, Tyson Campbell that time saw that all the way. The ball hung a bit, and he had a chance to get a pick. Watch number three. Got his head inside, underruns it, and had it. Man, that's when a quarterback, you just take a sigh of relief when they drop it yeah. like that. Second down and 15. Georgia thinking about some pressure. Now Monty Rice backs up the middle linebacker. I don't know if they need any more than four. Now, another one, another movement up front. Georgia was shifting, and Tennessee moved again. So that's the fourth time, Pruitt says. He should be yelling at his offensive line. They have to be ready for that. Ball start on the offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty, second down. And you, pick, you hear the big... The crowd noise because it's Kate Mays, the former Bulldog, that yes. moved. Yes, he did. <laughs> I think it was after that movement, though, I believe. I'm not sure. But there was a late shift by Georgia, and this time the call was on Cade Mays. Tennessee's going the wrong direction. Second and 20. Keep it on the ground. Eric Gray trying to get to the edge. Pretty good run there as Quay Walker made the stop for Georgia around the conference today. If you haven't heard, Texas A&M at home with a big win over Florida, South Carolina beats Vandy. Mizzou picks off the defending champion Tigers of LSU, handing them their second loss of the year. Strange happenings. And here they got a two-point Georgia lead with 8.50 remaining in the third quarter. And I like that defense by Kirby Smart and Dan Lanning right there. He knew that Tennessee was going to get the ball out of their hands quickly, trying to avoid the sack. He dropped back, make it happen in front of them, make the tackle, and get the ball back. Smart defense. They enforce the punt for Paxton Brooks. And Kiaris Jackson back deep for Georgia. Jackson has to backpedal. The call to fair catch around the 11 or 12 yard line. And that's where Georgia will have it. Offensively, now playing with a two-point lead. Some of the great faces and players of Bulldog Volunteers past. Middle of the third quarter with Georgia leading 23-21 over Tennessee. A little bit earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Which was of the nine head coaches at their alma mater, who's the only person to win a national championship is either a player or a coach. Scott Frost, not as a coach, but as a quarterback at Nebraska. And that's where he is now. With football teams, those two teams he was on, that's for sure. Yeah. One was shared with Michigan, 97. The Georgia, not great field position, but they have the ball back. Their last two drives, if you want to call them that, eight plays, three yards, but three points. Yes. So, however you can do it. But the plays are starting to stack up now against this Tennessee defense. 50 plays already in this game for the Tennessee defense. For about three. 
Tyler Barron, the guy that came in to have to play the spot of DeAndre Johnson, who was ejected from the game for targeting in the first half and on the tackle. Georgia fans waiting for something explosive to happen maybe, offensively. Maybe even not explosive, just good. It doesn't even have to be big explosive. Just give us a good positive play. That one's not nope. a positive play. Loss of one, maybe two. By Toa Toa, the linebacker to make the hit. Cannot get to that second level and block number 11. They're stopping that line. Toa Toa is running anywhere he wants. Takes on a blocker wow. and makes the play. Wow, watch this. Watch number 11 take on Schaefer and then clean up the play. That is linebacker play. It sure is. Take on a 330 pounder and then make the stop as well and force a third and eight. Dennett draw play. McIntosh going to be brought down for a loss again. Again, good work by the Tennessee defense. Mormon Joseph made the first hit. Well, they're definitely keeping their football team in the game. A couple turnovers. Got Georgia going backwards. Can't run the ball. Can't block the middle linebacker. And now Jake Kamara is going to be asked to punt from out of his own end zone. And not, not a lot of confidence to call a, a third and long pass play with Stetson Bennett nope. right there. Not in that position on the field. Eric Gray waits on this one back around the 40 yard line of Tennessee. He's going to have to back paddle more than that. Oh, what a kick. Kamarda. And right on the line. Goes out at about the 24 yard line. That was a monster punt. Got every inch out of it. it hit the ground and the out of bounds line within a foot of the field. 64 yard kick by Kamarda. That flips the field for Georgia a little bit. They were the typical next door neighbors. They were also notorious Russian spies. See how the FBI tracked them down and caught them. The FBI declassified. Spies Next Door, new episode is Tuesday, only on CBS. Let's check in with Jamie Erdahl. Oh, Brad, we learned something from Lane Kiffin this week that we're all better for knowing. In a radio interview, he said there's a group chat that exists between coaches that work for Saban, or as he called them, we all have the same father. Kirby Smart, Jeremy Pruitt, Bill Muschamp, and Lane Kiffin. I asked him to both coaches, now that this is out, want to tell us about the group chat? Kirby said Lane is on suspension. Jeremy said he only <laughs> brings the comedy in that group chat. <laughs> oh, man, here's an end around. Two yards out of that as Richard LeCount with the tackle on the far sideline. So both coordinators really, Jim, uh, Todd Munkin and Jim Chaney are finding ways to how to help their offense right now. They can't block the fronts for one team. Tennessee can't block the front for Georgia. And Georgia can't block the linebackers for Tennessee. And Georgia with another big defensive play this time. Monty Rice, the middle linebacker with the hit. Monty Rice runs this down. A lot of confidence in this Georgia defense. 32 right there in the middle. Sees it quickly and turns. Runs forced inside. Great job outside to help turn it in by Tyson Campbell, number three, and that made the play. He's going to hear that Mr. Danielson, as he called you on the Zoom <laughs> yesterday, said nice things about it. I said, Mr. Danielson, I've been listening to you since I was 10 years old. Man, I can't believe I get to talk to you now. Long time. Garantano under pressure. Ball is out again. And the big Myman trying to get to it and just does. Wade Morris covered it, or it could have been another disaster for the Volunteers. Adam Anderson, I think the guy that caused the fumble, he had a big sack against Auburn last week. Coming from the left side. Right around the corner. Strip sack. And it's gone. Adam Anderson comes around and it's out, it's out, and it's not out. Oh my. So Morris missed the block, so he might as well get the fumble. Yep. So now, after the great punt by Kamada to the 24, Tennessee has to punt inside its own end zone here. Paxton Brooks. Right now it's been which offense is worse so far in the fourth quarter. Kiaris Jackson has to backpedal and call a fair catch and takes it around the 38-yard line. 
So the punters do their job trying to keep the field position going in their team's favor. And with 428 remaining in the third quarter, Georgia's offense, as Gary said, has not done a good job. Gets the football back. National news and notes, the LSU-Missouri game moved to Columbia. LSU is wishing that that hadn't happened. And uh, Iowa Hawkeyes going to wear a jersey patch honoring Hayden Fry. And Bobby Bowden tested positive for COVID-19. And, Coach, we hope you're doing well. And that takes us back to how many times we did Iowa games back in the Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Hayden Fry, just, uh, we were with him all those years. And, and just we just kept saying, Coach, what are you going to do offensively? Scratch where it is. Scratch where it is. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's see if Georgia can scratch where it's itching here on first down. Now it's itching all over for Georgia. Can they find a play? Got him on a square in. And got it complete. It's Burton again. First down. Across the 50, and the ball comes out, but it's covered by one of Georgia's linemen this time. The deep square in on first down. That offensive line gave Stetson Bennett time. It's going to happen way downfield. You got to have time. He does. Bennett comes backside and delivers it. He loves to throw the ball over the middle. And how about Trey Hill coming all the way from the center spot and taking that one on midair? He's following Ripped the out. play. Yep, and without that hustle, that would have been Tennessee's ball. Good job by Trey Hill, who had a bad snap that led to a Tennessee touchdown in the opening minute of the game, and he just had a football-saving move there. Alante Taylor is the guy that they're helping off the field. Right at the end of the play, it's ripped loose by McCullough, and then Trey Hills, the guy standing there, and then he's going, my goodness. Well, we got one on the last play. Morris got one, so we lost one right there. Well, he's used to handling the football, but I don't think in that kind of sense he wasn't expecting to become a fullback there. But at any rate, George has got a first down at the Tennessee 44. A tough linebacker to block. Holy cow. Georgia's offensive line last year. Where are they now? Well, a couple of guys were first round draft choices and another one a fourth round pick. And Trey Hill's still the center and Cade Mays is playing for Tennessee. So the one guy that's still here just made a big play for Georgia, number 55. Second straight year, Kirby had seven players drafted. That talent, if you got a word for Kirby's turning around this program, it has been talent. He is bringing talent in here. Now he's got to finish off a season. That's the goal. Empty backfield. Yes. That's in Bennett. Set the throw. The quick throw. And again, it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Middleton, I think, got a hand on it I think again. It was Middleton. That was an all out blitz, man to man look. Everybody was off the line of scrimmage. Five deep. Declaring Bennett knew he was hot and he had to get rid of the ball. He's trying to get it to Pickens, and we haven't had a Pickens sighting since he had the stupid move on the sideline. They're first. The unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. All right. Third down and 10. Tennessee takes a timeout. We'll be right back. CBS Sunday Night Movies are back every Sunday in October with Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Scream, and tomorrow get together to relive Clueless, CBS Sunday Night Movies, tomorrow on CBS. The question is why would Tennessee call a timeout there? Because they only had 10 men on the field through the break their count. Jeremy Banks was off the field. He was the 11th man, and watch the timeout signal in the back right there. That saved the play. Third down at 10, Bennett. Steps in, fires far sideline, got a man complete. Kiaris Jackson again. He's leveled as he caught it, but he's got a first down. Well, Warren McClendon, the right tackle, had his hands full, but Stetson Bennett hung in there and delivered it to the outside. A great throw to the outside. Tennessee trying to change up their defensive personnel, trying to get guys off the field. Georgia trying to hurry. And with all that, whistles stop play. And Tennessee had to take another timeout. timeout. Well, they were trying to change lines out there, and Georgia was up on the ball, ready to go. Back-to-back -back play substitution timeouts. Back in Athens, just under three minutes to go in a third quarter that hasn't produced much offense. And Tennessee, like many people, having an impossible time on the ground against the Georgia defense. Yeah. So far, even with that last pass, Georgia has 52 yards of total offense in the second, in the third quarter. Tennessee just 12. Wow. 
First down, Georgia, at the 24-yard line. Two turnovers on top. Yep. And it pump fakes and comes back on a middle screen to Kiaris Jackson. Jackson with a block. And he's going to have another first down, and a flag flies in. Watch this well-designed play by Todd Munkin. Kiaris Jackson, watch. He's going to pretend like he's blocking, and then he runs the screen. Watch him stand there. Stock block, stock block. Watch a stock block, stock block. Wait, and then come over the middle. Well defended. And then a penalty flag at the end of it. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense, number 54. Five yard penalty from the previous plot. Replay first down. So on that design, he needs to catch that ball behind the line of scrimmage. I guess he did not. Justin Schaefer, the guilty party. Cut that ball about a yard, two yards downfield. You got to get it behind the line of scrimmage because those on that screenplay, those linemen are releasing. Now you see the block, and Kiaris Jackson, you take that one away. Well, he's been the number one target for Bennett. So first and 15. earlier for a touchdown this time almost a first down and the flag flies in again at the end of the play so if the middle linebacker is making a lot of plays the quarterback has to keep it every once in a while the zone read keep Georgia fans have been begging for the quarterback to keep it on the zone read for about two years yeah, I think here is Jackson might have been called holding. for a hold yep holding on the offense number 10 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. Both teams seem to want to give it to the other team, and neither team is able to take it. <laughs> right. Right on the logo right there, number 10. Middle of your screen, and he grabs it. Got some jersey. Yep. Lack of discipline. What few first downs we've had from either offense, it seems right after that. There's a penalty to back it up in the wrong direction. Here's a little toss. Hit again at the end of the play, but he's still going. I don't know how Kendall Milton got out of that initial contact, but he did. I mean, I thought this was going to be, you know, no gain or a loss of yards, and Kendall Milton, the true freshman, accelerates. And then does not give up on the play. Shakes about five Tennessee defenders on that play. They hit him hard, but they did not wrap him up. One of the best runs of the day by the freshman, and it makes second down a little yeah. easier here. And now it's in a position where they can pick up this first down. They got two downs for it. Zamir White. Man, he hasn't had much today. Tennessee knows when number three is coming. Got a yard. It'll be third down. So we work our way to the final minutes of the third quarter. Two yards on 11 plays in the last three drives. This drive a little better. Seven plays and 41 yards, and now they'd like to get seven more right here. Pickens to the top of your screen has been a non-factor today, except negative factor. Bennett down the middle, complete. It's a touchdown to Kiaris Jackson. Bennett's favorite target through the first three weeks of the season, and he hooks up with him again. They like to run down the middle of the field. Boy, that's just a bad bust. Playing three on two coverage, and you let the slot receiver come right inside you. Sean Chamberger right there, number 12. It's a breakdown right from the snap. Gift touchdown to the quarterback who likes to throw the ball over the middle anyway. Trying to force that guy to the outside gets beat right at the line of scrimmage. 
Ball player shaken up on that play as well, being helped to the sideline as Georgia extends its lead. Max Bennett is coming off the field. Extra point is up and good by Bud Lesney. So Kiaris Jackson, the sophomore who's been the favorite target of Bennett, has his first career touchdown catch as a Bulldog, and it adds to the Georgia lead. Sixty-two yard drive and eight plays, Gary. Just under four minutes for this hookup. A little bit of motion confused Tennessee. This guy and this guy get confused on the coverage, leave the second receiver wide open. They both go for the motion player. Just that little bit of window dressing caused the touchdown. And from our pylon, AT&T 5G cam, number 10, the sophomore, who's becoming a household name around here, has his first Georgia touchdown. Bayless Jones inside his own five. Oh, man, is he met? before he got to the 20 yard line. Nice job by the coverage team of Georgia led by Jalen Kimber. So you wouldn't think, I mean, the mistake of great stop by the Tennessee defense to get to that position, but then they kind of disintegrate. You know, right there at the end, they make a mental mistake on combo coverage. One guy goes in motion, two Tennessee players make a mistake. So from a 21-17 lead to a 30-21 deficit for Tennessee, there's that shift again, late shift, and run right into it. Again, they feel that the Tennessee offense is coming up at the line of scrimmage and changing the play with the front, and then they shift and give you a 50-50 chance that he changed the play to the right side, watch him shift to where they think the play is going to go, and they shift right into the play. And we're going to shift right into the fourth quarter. The third quarter, though, it wasn't pretty for Georgia. They owned it as far as the points at the end of the third quarter, 30 to 21. A little tribute to Eddie Van Halen, one of the great guitarists ever who passed away this week at age 65. We'll be back to Athens after this. And a word from your local station. Depot SEC on CBS enters the fourth quarter between the Hedges in Athens, Georgia, and the Bulldogs in front at home. Where they've won 22 of their last 23 games. They're up 30 to 21. Tennessee on offense. They fake the end around, and Garantano's going to throw it back out in the flat to the guy that was in motion. And that's Eric Gray. Didn't get much out of it, though, as we bring you back in the booth. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl down in the field. That might go down in history as one of the least productive offensive quarters in Georgia history, but they gained 13 points. I know. I was like, holy cow. Everything went wrong except the score. But that Georgia defense has stepped up. They are on fire here in the third quarter. Oh, boy, and they just about forced another turnover there as Garantano got hammered as he let go of that football. The front for Tennessee, that strong, tough front up front, is having trouble handling this athletic front for Georgia. And Kobe Dean is a guy that got to him. From all different angles, and the athletes all over the field are starting to have a big effect in this football game. Third and passing is not a good down against this Georgia defense. Maxton Brooks again to punt inside his own 10-yard line. Kiaris Jackson, who just caught the touchdown pass. Back deep for Georgia. This is not a great kick unless it gets a good bounce, and it does, and he picks up another one. He's going to lose about a yard again. He doesn't have any return yards, but he has a lot of stop yards, you know. <laughs> Next Saturday, SEC at CBS is in prime time. One of the marquee matchups of the young college football season. These third-ranked Georgia Bulldogs taking on number two Alabama in the next chapter of that classic rivalry. Get you set for kickoff at 7 Eastern with the drive to Atlanta. Followed by college football today with Zook and the guys. Next Saturday night, SEC on CBS is Gary, Jamie, Myself and our crew will head to Tuscaloosa for the second time this year. I think Kirby Smart looked at his offense and his offensive line and say, can you give me four first downs? Can we run the ball? We've got the lead here right now. Let's see if we can control the ball and the clock here. 
From the 34. Quick throw out of the flat. Complete. And a first down. That's Demetrius Robertson. His first catch of the day. Big first downs. They do the wide receiver screen. Very safe play to the outside. And this time with Burton getting a good block on the slot, they're able to get around the outside. Flowers with the tackle. Then it taking his time. Yeah, he's pointing right here. I think someone's coming off the slot. Can we change the play? They do. Tennessee changes the defense. What's going to happen? He switches Amir White to the other side and then gives it to him anyway. And White crosses midfield. So he pointed over there, got a change of the play, and ran the inside zone away from him. Jeremy Banks with the stop on Zamir White. White's carried it. Is that his 20th time or his 19th time? 19, but only 39 yards. There's a football player right there. Toe toe, the linebacker. He might not be 4 or 5 speed, but he's 4 or 5 tough to block. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Second down and six. Play fake, quick throw. Complete to Pickens. And he's not going to get a first down. Did get it to the 45 yard line. It's only his second catch. So they've shut him down pretty good today. I think uh, McClendon, Warren McClendon is down right here. Redshirt freshman out of Brunswick, Georgia. Number 70, Warren McClendon, taking up on the play for the Bulldogs. And we'll take a break. Check on Warren McClendon when we come back. Let's take a look at our game recap from here in Athens where Georgia leads 30-21. Stetson Bennett to force some nifty footwork for an eight-yard touchdown as the mailman delivers the score there. Josh Palmer. Jared Garantano have looked up twice. That put the Volunteers in front of halftime. They had a nice goal line stand to keep it 21-17 at the break. Then the Bulldogs defense comes up big. Eric Stokes with an interception. A couple of takeaways, and then Stetson Bennett down the middle to Pierre's Jackson for the touchdown. And that's where we are as Georgia has the lead 30 to 21. And a third down and three here. We just under 12 and a half to go in the ball game. They keep it on the ground, and there's a first down run by Zabir White to the 40. I say that's an interesting call for this Georgia offense, getting stopped on third and fourth down. They want to keep the ball. Would they run it for a first down or put it in the hands of the quarterback? They ran it. They prove it. They make it. They're going to take clock off and crawl into slowly field goal range. Play action. Going to go for all of it right here. Jackson got it again. First and goal, Georgia. Boy, a first down call, play action, and by the way, had two touchdowns open on this one. Right down the middle, watch the tight end, and then Jackson go to the outside. Tight end's wide open, and Jackson with a perfect throw to Bennett, from Bennett. 33-yard pickup, first and goal. For the Dogs at the seven. That was a goal right, banging his way down inside the two. Right now, if you're Georgia, if you're Kirby, you almost got to look over to Georgia and go, we're running it. <laughs> we're proving we can do it. Will they come back with the same play? Sabir White's got one touchdown today. There's airborne this time, and he's stopped again. He's tried about every way. Yeah, yeah. They've tried tight formations, bunch formations. The monsters came in. They've used all their defensive linemen but they cannot get across the goal line in the running game. Tavares Crouch made the stop there. Coming in with the big guys, aren't they? That's how far away they are from the Tennessee goal line. That's twice as far as the last time they were there on <laughs> third and fourth down. And there you see Jordan Davis and Carter, 89 and 88. This time, a little short toss, and how about that? 
You said, do they have a play action out of this a little bit earlier? And they get it to Carter for the touchdown. Well, Jalen Carter, the true freshman, defensive tackle, gets the touchdown. There he is, big fullback, slides out. I was wondering why they didn't call this at the end of the half. Almost gets knocked off of his route, but stays on his feet. If he didn't weigh that much, he wouldn't have gotten chipped and not go down, but he kept his footing, <laughs> the big fella. You need more than a chip with that guy, <laughs> don't you? So it's a good thing they had something in the package, and they open up this lead comfortably now with 10 minutes to go. That is a defensive lineman's dream right there. The yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That is the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul for both players. Unsportsmanlike conduct foul at the end of the play. Yeah, we got two guys with helmets off down there. So yeah, the can't defensive do that. lineman running down there from the sideline to congratulate their partner, and they didn't take their helmet with them. Well, it capped a 66-yard drive in eight plays. You're not going to see many receivers as big as that guy. One-yard touchdown, and it's 37-21. FCC on CBS is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Gillette. Allstate. And by Sonic. Well, Georgia has extended its lead to 37-21. So 20 unanswered points by the dogs. Tennessee running out of time to do anything about it. Ten and a half to go in the ballgame. I thought the key play on that drive was that third down rush for three yards when they picked it up. Yeah. You know, they were challenged on third down. They kind of picked the Tennessee defense to the outside to get them off balance, but that third down conversion led to the touchdown. But Leslie, this one dribbles its way into the end zone. Let's get a Papa John's update in New York. Here's Adam Zucker. Zuck. Yeah, Ness, Auburn bouncing back from that loss to Georgia. They were up 17-0, but the Hogs keep eating Felipe Frank's three touchdown passes to make it 20-18. Two-point conversion failed. They're in the fourth quarter, and Auburn just scored a touchdown, 26-18. Extra point pending. Back to you. Yeah, here it was 21-17 at halftime. Tennessee in front, but since that lead at the break, not so good. Jared Garantano has had a tough second half. He's been pressured, though. It's not been all him. That front for this Georgia defense has been in his face all the second half. Got a little crossing route to Eric Gray that time. Tennessee really only has two plays all day. The two deep throws to Josh Palmer has really been the only two plays all day that have gained more than 15 yards. Both deep sideline throws. Here, Tyler trying to throw a slant, and that one's covered well and complete. Palmer was the intended receiver. And so now, here's Tennessee in a third down again, third and five. Here they come. Garantano, look out from behind. Down he goes. The ball is out. Monty Rice giving chase. Rice has got it. He's going to score. Touchdown, Georgia. Monty Rice, my favorite player in college. <laughs> Tyreek Stevenson are going to blitz inside. Rice goes first, and then Stevenson behind him. Rice strips, 
and then he finds it, and then he takes it. Strip sack, force fumble, fumble return, touchdown of 17 yards by Gary's favorite football. <laughs> so how about that? That athletic front seven, especially in their dime package, you better be ready for it. We even saw LSU struggle with it. They gained a lot of yards, but Joe Burrow had to get out of a lot of these sack, potential sacks, and make plays. Tennessee has not been able to do it. In a matter of a half a minute, Tennessee's given up the ball, and Georgia has scored another touchdown. A tough second half for that young man. Let's take a look at the GMC game changers, Gary. And it's been the front of that Georgia defense. First, it was Malik Herring stopping the run game on the first play. Then you get the passing game going. Aziz Algilari comes around. Adam Anderson makes his play for a strip. Those front guys have been unblockable. And then you add in the blitz. Monty Rice and Tariq Stevenson is coming. They're like a pack of dogs. Wow. And they have not been able to be stopped. Molly Rice with a fumble return touchdown has made it 44-21. And there you can see the face has changed from halftime when Jared Garantano was 11 out of 13 for two touchdowns. And flag flies. That one goes out of bounds. Hey, we want to give a shout out to our college football publicist guru, Randall Liu, our guy. He and uh, his wife, Christine, had a baby girl today, Harper Avery. All right, Randall. So, Randall, if you, if you think having one kid. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. If you think your life has changed, it's about to change even <laughs> further. Well, especially during the fall, he's got me, a big kid. He always has to take care right. of, too. <laughs> Congratulations, Randall. One of our favorite guys at work. First down from the 35. There's a three yard gain. That's not going to do much. Ty Chandler, as the clock so continues remember, to tick we, down. In the open, we said, could which offensive line could help the most? Well, Georgia's offensive line was OK, but the offensive line for Tennessee could not handle the Georgia front. That's been the story of the game. Garantano got a wide open receiver out there. Keaton, the uh, tight end. Get right back to it again. It's going to be another game for Tennessee. Cannot run the ball against this Georgia defense four years in a row. That was actually Princeton fan, the tight end. And he got the first down at the 46. Remember, Tennessee used two timeouts on back to back plays, too, so they only got one timeout remaining. Tyson Campbell brings down Josh Palmer. Palmer has been the offense today, and now he got poked in the eye, it looks like. And one could understand it at that point. I mean, they had a 10 men on the field. They take a timeout. You got to do it. Then they got 12 men on the field. They take a timeout. They had to. The average was good, yep. 11. You got it. But at that point, it was still a game. You know, you, you know, might as well use them when it was still a ball game. Right now would be a unbelievable comeback to make this a game again. So Josh Palmer trying to get the tears out of his right eye. We've got a quick timeout. Coming up after our game, Adam Rook and BJ will have the day's best highlights. The college football post game show presented by Rocket Mortgage. And we are 851 away from the end of this one. Interesting day today. Upsets in the SEC, but next week for as much as change, a lot still the same. The Power Five Tennessee came in, tied with Notre Dame for the longest active winning streak, and that one's 8:51 away from going by the boards here at Athens. So next week we get Georgia and Alabama, just like we thought it would be. Yep. Two of the best team in the league facing each other. Right. <laughs> Alabama still has their work to do tonight against Ole Miss. The run is close to a first down. Quay Walker made the hit. Well, when Jeremy Pruitt took the job, sat down with Phil Fulmer and said the head coach of Tennessee is going to be judged by the games against Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. And in this first test of the year against one of those, unless something dramatic turns around, it's 
going to be 0 and, well, it's so far 0 and 6 against those teams. It'll be 0 and 7. In their last 20 times against those three, they're 3 and 17. They're going to play Alabama in a couple of weeks. They're 0 and 13 the last 13 times they played Alabama. I think that Florida game at the end of the year, though, is one that. If I'm a Val fan, I've got circled as a yep. possible end of that streak here. They got the jumbo set in here. I fourth down in the yard. And I don't know if it helped or not. The headlinesman's coming in. I think his foot is going to give them the first down, but not by much. Oh, I don't know. If the well, yellow line is correct, they might not. Gets beat. Boy, just inside. Could not find a crease. Monty Rice fills. The official on top of the screen as he jogs out there. Second time I've said that about that official. Right. Monty Rice and Quay Walker both fill at the same time and they couldn't, doesn't know if it gets across the line. We've got an old fashioned measurement coming up. <laughs> he didn't get it. Oh. George's defense holds. Watch Monty Rice. He can feel it. It's an ISO. Can he beat it into the line of scrimmage? He takes on the lead. Bonker Bumpus that time. And then it's cleaned up by the help from behind. First guy there has to take on the lead blocker and hope your people come from behind, and yep. they did. So Georgia takes over on downs. Stetson Bennett on the day. Yeah. First he had a nifty run for eight yards and a touchdown. And then did it with his arm. This was pretty cool. He looks to his left, nothing's there, and comes back to the middle to throw the touchdown pass. You could see his eyes go left, and of course at the end, the execution of the short pass. He just had a shot put that yeah, one that to the big easy. guy. <laughs> There's his numbers. Three total touchdowns, nine different receivers. I'm not sure when we looked on the calendar is there's another nice run. And the ball came out at the end. I think the play had been called dead. Kendall Milton having the ball in his left hand there, and he was yeah, down. Yep, right elbow was down. So let's just say that uh, looking forward that this Tennessee team can't handle Alabama. Okay, I mean, it's, it would be an upset to beat Alabama. And they come into that last game, they win all their other games that they're supposed to win, let's say. Okay? Uh -huh. Boy, would that be a big game for Tennessee? Uh -huh. Having the Gators coming in there, playing Absolutely. that last game to go 8-2 and two or 7-3? and three. Let me ask you a question. When we looked at the redone schedule this year and knew that we were going to Tuscaloosa. Did you think number 13 was going to be playing quarterback for Georgia? <laughs> he's, he's doing his job. No, I did a lot of talk shows, but that didn't come up. I didn't think it did. <laughs> so there's no walkovers in this league this year. You know, I mean, Arkansas playing better ball. Kentucky's not an easy football game. But if you're a, a Vol fan and you can win every game but Georgia and Alabama, two teams that maybe have a little better talent than you still, okay? Would you take going into that Florida game with two losses and take your chances in that last game of the year? That would, that would be a fun finish for this program. Georgia taking its time, letting the clock wind down near the six minute mark. Dejan Edwards in the backfield, a little pitch to him. Puts his head down, got back to the line of scrimmage. Let's check in with Jamie. We're seeing Stetson Bennett string together some pretty remarkable starts here as a Georgia quarterback, but it took him a while to get here. He had to leave to Jones County Community Junior College. He told me now he doesn't want to offend his home conference now, but you can get babied in the SEC as a student athlete. Some of the privileges you get are pretty remarkable. So he grew up a lot when he was at Jones County. There was nowhere else he could have made closer friends. The living situation he was in was very eye opening. He was only gone for six months, but he grew up a lifetime in that time. Yeah, he said we weren't in the great digs. We have a Georgia. Yeah, playing junior college football coming out here today. This is a big crowd. <laughs> 1,000. 
with another good run and now Georgia pile up a few rushing yards when they're trying to chew the clock and that's what they want to do as we work our way down of course, near the five minute mark. Of course the challenge for you know Georgia going against Alabama is the explosive receivers watching you know what Tennessee's receivers did on the deep ball Alabama's yeah. got explosive receivers all over the field. Jamie talking about the junior college where Stetson Bennett went before he came back and I I apologize to the folks in Mississippi. I said, I don't know where Ellisville, Mississippi is. And Stetson said, you know where Hattiesburg is? I said, yeah, he says about 15 minutes from there. I said, okay, that's close enough. There you go. <laughs> Third down at five. Play action bootleg. He's going to keep this all the way. And, ooh, took a big hit, but he got a first down. I don't think he ever landed. Went over the top of one of the would-be tacklers. And he's got a first down. You know, you wait four years and nobody notices you, you don't slide, do you? There's no slide when you wait four years to play and you go to the junior college route, you finish off every play. As he said, I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's cool. It is. Yeah. Oh, he got dinged. Yep. Well, he had a big shot, had his neck bent kind of funny, and uh, he's coming out. He's saying that it's, it's a helmet, helmet problem. Yeah. There's, there's no way you want to come off the field injured the way you played today, especially if, if you're not, you know, but you're him. But, but he took a shot on the helmet right there, boy. Here's again the look at the end of the play. I know. Dewan Mathis is coming into the backfield for Georgia. He's the guy that started the season as the starter of week one against Arkansas and then was replaced by Stetson Bennett when he was not very effective. So we'll see if he's just in for one player, if he's going to maybe be the guy to finish things off. Milton in the backfield with him will get the carry. It's great up the middle inside the 20 to the 19. And Stetson Bennett says, I'm coming back in. I'm okay, and so is my help. Going to finish this game right now. It's all garbage time right now. You're not getting really any uh, experience for the backup quarterback. I don't think they're going to run Stetson anymore, though. I'll tell you that. Most of them will just be handoffs the rest of the game. 16 and 26, another 200 plus yard game. That's three in a row for him. For a guy whose entire season last year consisted of 260 passing yards when he filled in. For Jake Fromm at times. He was excited to talk to us before that he was the backup quarterback when they went to Notre Dame that time. He had 15 plays he was going to run and he's going to. He's going to throw. Oh, I thought he was going to throw a touchdown. Yep. Just a shade late. Jalen Johnson, the intended receiver. Adam thought he was wide open and then just the ball hung and made up a bit of time to make the play. Kenneth George does it. Nice job. Yep, very nice coverage. Stetson's like, mm, I almost had that one. Third down, so that stops the clock at 310. Third down and seven. Need to get inside the 13-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. Tennessee's got it, I think. So a fumble. Georgia hadn't turned things over until right there, trying to get some extra yardage. Well, Milton has run aggressively. He's run aggressively into contact. But this time he gets ripped from behind the left hand of the Tennessee defender, pops it out. Got to carry it really high and tight in this league and then run hard. George with a fumble recovery gives it back to the Tennessee offense with three minutes remaining. Tennessee has one timeout. He's still moving that neck around a little bit after that hit he took. He got a tough one. Yeah. And again, the Georgia defense against the run has been sensational today. Eric Gray stopped by. Canning Tindall. And as we talked about early, that's been the story. Could in this game, the Tennessee rush offense for the fourth year in a row has not been able to produce any help for their football team. The year they beat it when we were here with a Hail Mary to Jawan Jennings at day Josh Jobs and a little a back called Elvin Kamara had a pretty good day. Rushing for over 100 yards. He's still pretty good himself. 
Coming up tonight on CBS begins with the drama FBI Most Wanted, followed by back to back editions of 48 Hours tonight only on CBS. You know, what's interesting about this Georgia team, remember, they're being judged on can they win a national championship. That's the stage they are right now. Garantano, long ball down the sideline, diving attempt incomplete. Intended for Bayless Jones, who laid out for it and couldn't what come I'm, up with it. What I'm trying to is, like, maybe since that Alabama team in 2016, one of the rare teams in college football nowadays that the strength of their team is their defense, not their offense. Everybody else, it's their offense. I mean, you got to go back to Alabama in 16, Maybe that Ohio State team back there, you know, but this team is built. The strength of it is on their defense. Here, Tano, short pass down the middle. Georgia happy to just keep everything in front of them right now defensively. Tend to make another stop. And here's Georgia's schedule. And it all gets going under the lights in Tuscaloosa. Brian Denny next week against second ranked Alabama. Everybody getting in the act. Tyndall's had about three plays in a row just in this series. Yeah, he's trying to show that he's uh, uh, the word trying to get on the field. I'm good, coach. Can I get on the field too? I want to get in there in prime time to chase the quarterback. That would be Mac Jones next week. So fourth down. That'd be the last time Tennessee touches it. Unless they can convert here. Montano hangs in tough and throws a strike and it is first down. And Ramel Keaton that time, good out route to the outside. Good kind of like air is gone out of the game. Not much of a pass rush that time. He's able to deliver. With a minute left, Garantano throws to the Georgia bench and complete. So Jared had four cracks at Georgia, one time in relief of Brian Maurer, who's shaken up in the game last year. He came in, so he had part of that game to work against Georgia. And then three other times, and he is over against the Bulldogs. But that happens a lot against Kirby Smart's defenses. Yeah, and, I, and remember, this is a year that doesn't count. I, mean, I, I guess he could come back for another shot at him next year. This year does not count on eligibility-wise. Everybody gets a free year this year, which would be really interesting for Brandon Kennedy, the center for Tennessee. He right? came over from Alabama, transferred. Yeah, this is his sixth year for playing for Tennessee, their center. And could he get a seventh year of eligibility? <laughs> I played seven years of the SEC. I mean, there's guys at BYU that says that's too old, man. <laughs> I love when you came up with that one yesterday. <laughs> Garantano, third and five out in the flat. Completes to Chandler. Chandler going to tackle down the sideline. And then he's deposited over there on the sideline by Major Burns. Brandon has two degrees and he's working on his third degree. <laughs> they call him Coach Kennedy in the offensive lineman room because <laughs> he's been around so long. Oh, another one free row. Oh, Garantano just whips it up in the air. Pretty cool to get that out of bounds from where he was. Almost a far hash and he whips it out of bounds. So the saga of Stetson Bennett the fourth continues 3 and 0 as the starter for Georgia this year. Second and 10. As we saw that what quarterback roulette we had earlier. Yep. We thought it was Jamie Newman. We thought it was JT Daniels. Thought it was Dwan Mathis. We did not think it would be Stetson Bennett playing against Alabama in practice. Garantano airs it out to the end zone, almost one-handed out there by Cedric Tillman. And we're down to six seconds. I like some of the names in the Georgia secondary. This is Amir Speed. That's a good name. Yes. Yeah. So is Major Burns. Mm -hmm. Lewis C. That's a good name for a defensive back. Okay. Even Richard LeCount. I like that name. Richard. Well, he's a heck of a player. We haven't called his number that much today. Oh. He's the leader of the secondary back there, not in there right now. And Mark Webb, put him in their wedge. Sure. A lot of good secondary names back there. They go to George on the final play, and Garantano goes down on the final play, and That's Tyndall again. 
I think that's a good finish of this game. It tells the whole story. Tells the story of the Georgia defense. And the story is that it was one of about 20 guys that played on defense, and if they changed jerseys, you wouldn't know the difference. So much depth on that side of the ball, and Georgia goes from being down 21-17 at halftime to winning going away 44 to 21. And now it's time for our play of the game, presented by Jersey Mike Subs. And there's nothing I like more than seeing a big fella that usually plays defense, play offense, and then get himself a little sugar. A touchdown on one yard, and here's how Scott Howard called it on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. Play fake, Milton Bennett rolls, throws it to the tight end, no, the fullback, he threw it to Carter, he threw it to Carter, touchdown, oh, wow, what a play, the fullback, the defensive lineman just caught the touchdown. That's how much fun it is when you're a big fella. Jalen Carter, the true freshman out of Apopka, Florida, on the touchdown. Stetson Bennett is 3-0, Jamie Erdahl. Stetson Bennett, 3-0. How comfortable did you feel in this offense today? It felt, well, second half felt a lot better in the first half. But, I, I mean, we played well in the first half. It was just we made silly mistakes. We gave him the first touchdown. We didn't, I didn't get the daggum, um QB sneak on fourth and one, and we had a bunch of penalties that just set us back. And going in before half, we didn't get the, the fourth and one, and that just it made us feel uh, not as good as, as, as it should have been. And then the second half, we get a little help from the defense. The mailman, <laughs> the mailman delivers for Georgia. Stetson, you have watched these games up in the nosebleeds, and now you're starting for this team on Sanford, at Sanford Stadium. This dream continues for you. How does it feel? Feels good. I mean, we got to be a little bit better on third down. We had a, a dry spell there for a little bit that, that just didn't feel very good. And then we, we caught it back in the fourth quarter. Um, I mean, it feels great, but we, we go play Alabama next week. So absolutely. Thanks, Stetson. Go celebrate. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Stetson, we'll see you in Alabama next week. Georgia moves to 3-0 and as the third ranked team in the country. They win at home again where they've won so many times for so many years. And though Tennessee gave them a scare in the first half, it was all Bulldogs in half number two. And they take the game in the SEC East 44 to 21. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl, Brad Nessler saying so long from Athens. Final score, 44-21 dogs. College football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage is up next after these messages. So long from Athens.